Today is Monday, November 6th, 2023, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. Oh man, a lot of topics today. Okay, we find out that apparently the creator of VeggieTales is woke and an atheist now, so that's rough. I guess he was also the voice of Bob the Tomato. <laughs> um, so that's not good. Oh, oh, what was the other one? Uh, ah, something the pirate. Uh, there's a Christian version. Oh, what was the Christian version? Patchy the pirate, or Patches the pirate. Something like that was a Christian version. Well, I mean, I guess a, a continuing Christian version. Um, anyways, of child stories about God. Uh, then we we talk about the angel of the Lord. Um, why I have a note in there, I'm not sure what the topic was. <laughs> it's been a long day. Anyways, but talking about the angel of the Lord and, um, you know, the robe dipped in blood in Revelations uh, 13, I think. Like, whose blood that is. It's not his own. It's the blood of the enemies. Anyways, getting back to uh, kind of pieces of Jesus in the Old Testament, uh, all the way from there to Revelation. Then we talk about the Gnostic Gospels, um, a little bit about that, uh, the Pseudopagographa, Apocrypha, um, you know, just just read it all. Like, people act like it's such a mystery, like, how do you know which are the right books? Read them all. You'll figure it out real fast. Like, you, you can tell, like, some of these things are not like the others. So, no, one, no one's, like, you know, putting you in, like, uh, putting you in, like, a jail cell for reading them. Just read it all. Like, I think you'll come to the same conclusion most other people do really quick. You're going to be like, what does this have to do with anything? Like, this is this is nonsense. Anyway, is omission the same as lying? We know the Bible equates deception to lying, but what about omission? If someone's like, hey, did you club that baby seal? <laughs> Don't club baby seals. And you just stand there. Well, we think no. Um, then we talk about, does God lie? Some people point out, one person points out, a couple things from the Old Testament from the Bible that talk about, you know, God will send a lying spirit, or God will, you know, deceive these people. Is the, is it really uh, that simple, or is there more? One guy, Veckel, our guest, contends that if you just read the rest of the chapter, it clearly explains that these people are already believing lies. Wait, did I just do a spoiler? No, keep listening, you have to listen. I totally didn't just explain the answer. Anyway... God doesn't lie. <laughs> then we talk about politics. Uh, Viva Fry, a Canadian former lawyer in Quebec, uh, talks about Canadian death numbers through their assisted suicide program, whatever it's called, and how the the um, slippery slope is getting quite slippery indeed. Um, per him, it seems like it used to be a really stringent list of people who were candidates for this, and now it's just kind of like, yeah, you want to die? Here you go. Come die. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not that loose just yet, but if you listen to that guy, it sounds like it's going there quick. Um, then we talk about the literature genre of lit RPG. Um, if anyone's curious about that, I just discovered what it was. Uh, someone helps me walk through it a little bit. But anyway, it's a genre that kind of brings uh, tabletop uh, role-playing games into uh, literature and stories. So I'm not sure how it's different than fan fiction. But anyway, some guy tries to help me out. So check out the Ask a Christian book on Amazon. Check out the Ask a Christian merchandise store. Grab a t-shirt. Support this podcast. Sharing the gospel with people who really need it. Uh, and what else can you do? Uh, share these links. <laughs> Enjoy your Monday. Oh, boy. Who else is who else is struggling from daylight savings? Like, you're supposed to be, like, more well-rested. It had the opposite effect. I am dragging today. Anyways, <laughs> dragging, not a dragon. Anyway, I'll see you later. Well, so Mark is saying, uh, let's see, where is it? Patch the Pirate from Majesty Music. Is that uh, is that like a VeggieTales spinoff that's more holy? Patch the Pirate. Does anyone know Patch the Pirate? Nope. We've we got to look this up. All right, so, so VeggieTales is the creator's a woke atheist. And uh, hang on. Let's patch the pirate. Let's see. Let's see if ChatGPT knows. Who is patch? <clears throat> patch the pirate is a character from the series created by Ron Shelley Hamilton. Ron and Shelley Hamilton of Majesty Music. The character is a fun, adventurous pirate who often finds himself in various musical stories and situations designed for children. The character of Patch the Pirate has been featured in a series of musical albums, books, and audio adventures aimed at teaching Christian values to kids through engaging stories and songs. These materials have been used in churches, Christian schools, and homes as a way to entertain and educate children with a Christian focus. These stories and songs often contain moral and biblical lessons. Huh. I may have to wean my kids off Veggie Tales 
and get them patch the pirate. Let's see. Patch the pirate. Oh, patchy. Uh, wait, patchy the pirate? Oh, God. No, no. Patch the pirate. So, patchy the pirate is a weird guy from SpongeBob. We want patch the pirate. Ah, oh, that's better. <laughs> the first thing that comes up is a meme of Joe Biden sniffing him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. <clears throat> ah, all right, Mike. Uh, Mark, thank you for that. Uh, Patch the Pirate. It was a YouTube channel. I'm going to bring that to my child's attention. Do we need to do research, Mark, or are these people legit? Like, none of them are like woke atheists yet? Says that it, somebody said it predates Veggie Tales, so it sounds like it's been out there quite a while. All right. I guess so. I'm under the. Uh, I have a question about the Veggie Tales uh, actors. You know, the one you guys are just speaking about, who became a, a super woke Marxist. Uh, was he always a believer? Uh, were all well, the actors believers or professing believers? At least. It, yes, theoretically. Actually, my wife's um, next door neighbor growing up. Uh, is married to one of the creators of Veggie Tales, and she worked on Veggie Tales for many, many years. And so she actually has a personal connection to this, and everybody who was involved in the initial production was definitely a creator. Well, all right then. <clears throat> Huh. All right, so how was everyone's uh, daylight savings time? Chris, this is the week we're supposed to gain an hour, but it feels like I lost three or four. That's probably because you're too busy. With what, trying to sleep? Well, if you gain an hour, that means you get an extra hour of sleep. That's what I thought, but I couldn't sleep through it. Like, I, I was specifically, like, someone suggested, they're like, oh, if, if you just wake up the same time you always wake up, then you'll be up an hour earlier, so you can, I, I think exercise was their intent. I'm like, that sounds awful. So I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm just going to, like, gain an extra hour <laughs> and sleep and, and, you know, get that extra hour back from the spring. But, no, I, I did what my, my friend, like, subliminally planted in my head. Um, I ended up waking up an, an hour earlier, like, more than an hour early. I'm like, why can't I sleep? And I just could not sleep. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I slept blissfully, and uh, I took my son to school this morning. Oh, thanks. And um, our daily, we do the LSB in the morning. Have you guys heard that? Like, Justin Peters reading the LSB. It's fantastic. Anyway, so uh, it was... <laughs> It was the uh, passage where uh, King Hezekiah is begging Yahweh to, like, send the Assyrians away. And the Assyrians are coming up to the gates, and they've been under siege and all this stuff. And then um, the angel of the Lord comes out and wipes out 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. Oh, uh, chapter 38, is it, I think? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, yeah, it was awesome because we were just listening to that and it's just Justin Peters reading it and it's just so fantastic. And so that was our, that was our very encouraging morning with, uh, you know, cause then I explained to him, I was like, look, we never see anywhere in the scripture where angels harm humans. It is always the angel of the Lord carrying this out. And I was like, now the main thing that we see in Revelation 20 is that Jesus, um, approaches the earth. Um, in his second coming with a robe dipped in blood. And we know that it's not the blood of Jesus that it's dipped in. So what is this robe of blood that he's dipped in? And most commentators uh, believe that the robe dipped in blood is the blood of the enemies of God, i.e. the Assyrians, the Egyptians. Every time you see a great slaughter of people done by the Lord, it is actually Jesus who is the one carrying out the death sentences. Fun stuff, right? 
I never for a second thought the blood would have been anything other than the enemies. Yeah. You know, that that part of I, has a, that story um, in Isaiah 37 to 38, it's, uh, that, that story I think uh, you uh, God used to uh, bring humility to me when it comes to having discussions with atheists and non-believers. Because in this story, um, Hezekiah gets this threatening letter from Sennacherib, you know, who's the king of Assyria. And you know he's black because his last name was Rib. But anyway... Uh, he gets that story. You are on fire today, bud. He gets that story. He gets that threatening letter from Sennacherib, and Sennacherib is basically in the letter threatening him, saying that your God, you know, is, is you know, it's going to send judgment towards you for all the bad the naughty things you guys have been doing. So he's going to send me uh, to attack your people. So Hezekiah gets this letter scared and i think the first thing he does is takes it to the lord takes it to the temple rolls it out and prays over it and then after that i think he takes it to the prophet isaiah and he shows it to him isaiah reads it and says you know don't believe it god has not sent them and then we come to chapter 38 where, where i think chris you just mentioned it where because god saw the humility in hezekiah he sends that one angel to wipe out 180,000 assyrians and so the moral of the story is, at least for me, is that whenever you come across an objection from an atheist or some sort of non-believer that you can't answer, it's okay to say, you know what, I don't know. Let me get back to you on that. Let me pray for you. Let me pray on that. And God, in my through my experience, has always responded in some positive fashion whenever I did that. You know, I, it, the weight was off my shoulder. I didn't have to feel like I'm super smart and I had to answer to every one of these objections. All I had to do was simply say, you know what, that's a good point. Let me get back to you on that one. Or let me point you, hey, Nate, this guy Nate might know the answer or this guy Chris might know the answer. Let me point you to them. But instead, I was so worried about my own pride trying to defeat every one of these objections when either... I just wasn't apt to do so, or I just had no business doing so. Just put it in prayer. Yep. And apparently God yep. has protected his people so much that he has forced the hand of Clubhouse to completely torpedo their <laughs> app. So atheists cannot find us to ask us questions anymore. So care, care for right. what you pray for. <laughs> it is 100% the case for divine hiddenness. <laughs> Right. I mean, how else do you explain it, right? Like, no logical explanation w would yeah. be like, hey, this is a great idea. They have a good business model. They're making money. They're putting people together. It's gener controversy creates cash. And then they're like, nope, shut it all down. It's like, there is no human explanation how this makes sense. God is protecting us from atheists. <laughs> right. But yeah, that story, uh, that's that's what actually inspired me to do uh, a little mini series called Thank God for Atheist. So I started doing these uh, series of videos and live streams where I we would take an we take an examination of some of these objections raised by the atheist. So what's your number one reason to thank God for the atheist? You asking me or? Yeah. So the number one reason? Oh, Good, great the number question. One, the number one reason. The number one reason is that I think it uh, it breeds humility from the believer, uh, out of the believer. <clears throat> Whenever, again, going back to what I was saying before, you come across an atheist who raises an objection that you don't have an answer to, it's okay to say, I don't have the answer. Uh, let me get back to it and then do what Hezekiah did in Isaiah 37. Bring it before the Lord. Roll out that prayer in front of him. And say, Lord, do you see this? I don't know how to answer this. How do you want me to respond to this? You know, and then the Lord, in His own fashion, will reveal the answer. It, it may, it may be like, Hey, turn to page this, or He may say, Uh, 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 not for you, Veckel. Why don't you go talk to Nate? Nate has the answer to that. Oh, okay, great. 
See, but either way, I could come out of that whole situation at peace and I've gained humility in doing so. Prashant, what's up? Uh, it, for me, it's because it always leaves a smile on my face. Atheism leaves a smile on my face whenever I encounter it because it is such a great joke. <laughs> it is. Yeah, somebody asked me, hey, what, what, what makes you, a, what's one of the biggest reasons you're a Christian? I said, one of the many? I said, the, the fact that atheism exists. The fact that you guys spend so much time trying to defeat and debunk a being who you know doesn't exist, but yet you spend a lot of time doing research and trying to find new ways to counter Christian tenets. That sounds to me like some strong dedication, man, to debunk something that doesn't exist. That doesn't make it. <laughs> you know, I do, I I do wish, I, I do I wish that think... I had faith of the atheist. The faith of the atheist is so great. I don't think any of the Hindu gods exist, and I don't think I've ever, uh, except, you know, maybe in the course of this religious discussion, how I'm just like, yeah, I don't think they exist. Like, I've never gone out of my way once to try to talk about how much they don't exist to other people who believe it. Just haven't done that. Right. I don't care to. Yep. Uh, what what doesn't exist? Any uh, the other Hindu gods. gods. What? Hinduism. Yeah, but then the atheists would say that Hinduism didn't, you know, cause colonization and the fall of the Western morality and, and democracy. Like, they'll, they'll go into this whole thing about how the reason they combat Christianity is because it's been so impactful and that they don't need to do that with other faiths because they haven't been as impactful. So yeah, they can, yeah, they can say that, that but yeah. they can say that, but they haven't been colonized. Like you know, they don't need to take up and champion a cause that happened hundreds of years ago. Like they can say that all they want, um, but I, I don't buy it. Like no, if we're like actively like you know doing evils in the world today, uh, you know, to you, to your family, to your neighborhood, to people that you'll ever meet in your life, maybe take up that cause. But to be like, oh, Christians are colonizers. Uh, okay, you don't need to champion a cause from six hundred years ago. How about we ask uh, our resident um, uh, Indian guy, um, token, uh, Prashant there, how aggressive Hinduism is. Have you hey, seen Prashant, Temple of Good Doom? morning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, how much time do you got? Um, start off with about a minute <laughs> and a half. going to be a good answer. I can't wait. Give us a minute and a half on Hinduism, Prashant. It'll be great. <laughs> this is the most racist thing I've ever heard in my life, my grandmother. <laughs> the most racist thing. Seriously. She said Hinduism that. or Chris? <laughs> his grandma. Listen up. My oh, grandma. Did, his grandma. Did you say both? <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother told me, and she's she she was born in like 1916 or 1917. She died on my mother's side, right? She died when in her late 90s, and she said that when she was a little girl, a young woman, she would take a bath every time the shadow of an untouchable fell on her. Yikes! Wait, this, uh, sh uh, what's an untouchable? What's that? You know, like the homeless the caste system. Yeah. Oh, the caste system. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, so you had one of the really, really light skinned grandmas. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, she had, she, she had gray blue eyes. For shot, were you guys Brahmin? Were you guys Brahmin caste? What, what caste was your family originally from? Um, how are the replays on? <laughs> Everything's on. Okay, well so, that tells me that whatever the top one was, that's what Prashant was. Like, that's he's like he's like royalty, like riding. He's like riding around on a bedazz bedazzled elephant, like in royalty with like servants, like fanning him. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're gonna do <laughs> now. So get this, so um, one of my friends from church, um, his name is John J.C. Bakhtan, and the reason it's J.C. Bakhtan is that his family, starting with his father, 
his father was a Hindu priest in the Brahmin class and uh, uh, caste rather and converted to Christianity. And so John grew up a Christian. Um, so he took on a Christian name and they took on the Jesu, which is Jesus. And I don't know what Bakpan means. He told me at one point, I, I forget. But they completely changed their name. They dropped it out of the cast. And, you know, they, you know it, was, it was incredibly shocking for everyone around them just because they were in the top Brahmin class and, or caste and uh, their family went Christian and were baptized as Christians. And so he's... He's an awesome guy. He, Nate, you'll like this. And Beckel, this dude is metal. Like, he used to run a ministry in India that would take um, victims of human trafficking and they would raid uh, brothels and save all these children. Isn't that crazy? Holy sound of freedom, Batman. That sounds good. <laughs> no, that, was, that sounds good. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't do that anymore, but because he lives here in the states, but he still he still fundraises for that organization. I'll have to I'll have to find out from him. We've given to it. I just don't remember. Which. Praise God. And for the record, Yvette, good morning. Yeah, water resistant is not waterproof. IP sixty seven. I deal with it all day. Is it sixty seven or is it the six or the seven? There's different there's different levels of water resistance. There's IP sixty six, IP sixty seven, IP sixty eight. Oh, I thought it was single digits. I thought it was six, seven, or eight. Or is is the the double digits like unnecessary stuff that like you know techie people like you throw out? There's, well, there's all kinds of different IEEE standards, so I'm I'm not sure. There may be like stuff in the single digits that applies to other things. When we're talking about computer technology. IP sixty seven oh. is for computer technology. It, it, it I mean, it's probably the same technology. thing because I was thinking there's like, you know, the IP, whatever, six and then seven, one's for water, one's for like dust, one's for like, but it's probably the same thing. And then there's Steph with all of her uh, heresy, like posting crap about iPhones, like no one cares about iPhones. Like <laughs> We were talking about Android, right? Like, oh, iPhone 15 is waterproof. No one cares about iPhone 15. I love my iPhone 15. This thing is awesome. I'm tired of iPhones. Bro, I recorded my kids' jazz concert from the other night in 4K at 24 frames per second, and it looks like something from a 35 millimeter camera. And remember, I used to run a photography company. Like, I know from, I know from different film stocks, and this looks really good. I meant to read up on the religious topics over the weekend. It's probably nothing like, gosh, like the sources I have, it's all, it's all the same. It's like, you know, Associated Press. Like I just try to find like random internet stuff talking about religion. Uh, you know, Did you my, check Protestia and Reformation or Dissenter? Oh, no. Hmm. <clears throat> Maybe I should. Maybe I should add them to the queue. Like usually like whatever, like the three I check. They're all just clones and say the exact same stuff. And it's always something about, like, the Pope. And it's never, like, super, like, wow, I got to talk about that. I'm curious. Has anybody heard uh, the Pope mention this situation with uh, Israel and Palestine? What, what's the Pope's thoughts on nope, that? Nope, he's Pope. hiding. It's probably More divine Pope. hiddenness. <laughs> 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 Let's find out. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying that he's Osama bin Laden. I'm just saying that he's Osama bin Hayden. <laughs> bin Osama Hayden. bin Hayden. Osama bin Hayden, baby. Osama bin Hayden. Now you sound like Cherry. It's disturbing. Just the Cherry. I mean, I just call her Cherry because I'm not real sure whose sister she. I, I don't know which. No, maybe. Don't worry about it. We don't. We're not going to do it. It's fine. We're not doing it. Don't ask him any more questions. Um, did you like jump out of the shower for that? 
She did. Like, she no. like, to the I almost no. jumped out of the shower to ask if Chris thinks it's okay that Phil Vischer was given effervescent grace, but I decided that the better thing was to just stay in the shower and let my question yeah. burn. So, so yeah, like, Don't you I mean, there's that? this. You listen to it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yes, it's the worst. There's this. So, and Protestia this morning, there's some really, there's some nuggets here, man. You, you got to check this. Rolling Stone mag condemns House Speaker Mike Johnson for helping his son stay away from porn. Oh, yeah, um, shame on that. You know, that's hard. Shame on him. Shame. Uh, well. Yeah. Uh, men teaching young men to engage in healthy behaviors and mindsets. How, you know, it's just, it's very oppressive. Well, you know, it's Rolling Stone magazine. They, they're out there to kill you. Oh, and more Mike Bickle stuff. So who's that? Oh my goodness. What's his name? Mike? Killing Mike. Mike Bickle. Yeah, he don't know either. See. Mm. Okay. He's, well, so okay, so he's like one of the most famous charismatic prophets. <laughs> Like he's like he's oh, like Kenneth Copeland famous. Him. Yeah, you don't know him because you guys aren't pagans, so you don't and you don't read about pagans. So this is good. This is good that you guys don't know who Mike Bickle is. But Mike Bickle got real famous in the eighties and nineties um, and early two thousands for so like decades um, for running something called IHOP. Um, oh, for, I know that. Yeah, the International, International House, House of Prayer. Of Prayer. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've heard of it. So, yeah, this guy, and he had the Kansas City Prophets under his roof for a while, the head one of which showed up for a meeting with John MacArthur completely wasted uh, with a flask in his pocket, which is hilarious that you would show up for a meeting with MacArthur hammered. It's pretty funny. It's kind of metal, actually. Um, but, I mean, uh, if I were meeting MacArthur, I should probably have a few drinks, too. Maybe it'll help me yeah. keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Help keep your mouth shut? Wait, yeah. when you drink, you get less gregarious? Yeah, I'm too busy more? laughing, you know? Oh, okay. Like you're, a, you're a half. Are you in the diner right now, or is that your living room TV that's so annoying? No, it's not in the diner. Oh, hold on. Um, anyway, so uh, Mike Bickle apparently raped a bunch of women uh, oh. during his quote-unquote ministry, and so he's now being exposed for this. Well, that's not good. But you know, all yeah. of his prophecies numbers, are still Was it numbers totally thirty-two true. or twenty-three? I always get the numbers mixed up. It says the truth always sends you out. No, no, no. Your sins. I'm sorry. It's, your sins will find you out, or something like that. Numbers thirty-two. Yeah. Well, the chickens are coming home to roost for him. <laughs> I think the bigger news is there's still a bunch of charismatics that are out there defending him. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you're hearing the phrase, touch not the Lord's anointed a lot right now. Oh, my. <laughs> Michael, did you swipe left? Touch. Yeah, he fat fingered it. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we hear you. Okay. Bob, probably not today. Internet. Probably not today, Bob. I can't. I can't hear any more. Like, hey, Bob, how was your weekend? <laughs> well, Trinitarians lie. Hey, Bob, what'd you eat for breakfast? Oh, Jesus and God. I, I can't. I can't do that today, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're tossing and turning in his sleep, trying to figure out every which Dad, way to have, defeat have Trinitarian. You, I posted <laughs> a link in the room chat. Have you seen this? This is like this is incredible. I'm tired of it. So, so Chris, uh, is there any more of the the Protestia stuff? Like, what what did it say? I mean, was that the whole was that the whole thing right there, or like, was there some big justification why the speaker's bad for trying to keep his kids from watching porn, or was that? Yeah, I mean, there was a whole there was a whole long read article in Rolling Stone magazine about you know they're trying to go after the dude and he's just a normal he's like us he's like a normal run of the mill everyday Christian and like they were shocked that he didn't have more than five thousand dollars in his bank account because when he became a congressman he did not start immediately bilking people for money and you know stealing from people and using his influence to you know bet on stocks and get rich. 
And so they're just completely flummoxed that the dude lives paycheck to paycheck. Like 80% of Americans. That is exactly like me. <laughs> yeah, and that's, you know, that's normal for most people. Like, you know, and so they're like, oh, there must be something sinister. He's not rich. Like, they're, that's seriously their argument. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, it's like, hey, this, this, this new high speaker is like, he reminds me of Pastor Mark. I don't think he's IFB, but like, just like somebody like you would want to have in charge of something, you know, like if I had like, you know, a sprawling business and I had to be, you know, away for a long time and I needed somebody to manage it, like I would 100% trust Pastor Mark to do that job, you know, like the like the shrewd manager in the parables, you know, like you want somebody like that. And it seems like this house speaker is that guy, you know, he's like the shrewd manager guy. How has no one ever heard of this guy before? Like what, what state's he even from? I don't even know that. Louisiana. He's, he's actually Bob's congressman. <laughs> I think Bob got him elected. Is that right, Bob? Or maybe Bob's talking alligator got him elected. I'm not real sure which one at this point. Or like the dog from Little Nicky. Because I feel like Bob. I feel oh, like the dog. <laughs> I feel like the dog from Little Nicky actually lives with Bob and talks to Bob all the time. <laughs> better, I mean, better than the dog from Son of Sam. Oh. Oh. Why did you, dude? It's too early in the morning for this. Never. I feel like when it gets a little cooler out, we should get Bob a giant puppy jacket, like little Nicky. What'd you say, cooler? <laughs> oh gosh, you definitely not. A... I mean, I like Bob. I don't want him to like. You know, shit, he like He's a kindly old gentleman, but I mean, I just wish that he would repent for his unbelief. For his abject sin. <clears throat> teaching heresy for 30 years. Yes, all of us wish he, I wish that all these weirdos would repent, like Kenneth Copeland, you know, that still have breath, um, you know, Paula White. Bill Johnson, you know, Mike Bickle. I wish they would all repent. It'd be awesome. Stephen Furtick. Uh, I could do without Joel Olsen. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, what was your joke? He's like, like, I wish they'd repent. And Prashant is like, I could do without Joel Osteen, but the implication is in heaven forever. Like, you're just. <laughs> You're just okay with Joel Osteen burning in hell because you could do without him. I don't know. I'm sorry. I thought that was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Future Mania. <laughs> you imagine everybody's in heaven having a good time and Prashant like, hey, who's that guy? That, that's Joel Osteen. And Prashant <laughs> like, how did he make it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be fair, would be a... everyone would have that same question. Yeah, there's never Knesset. Let me go have a couple of drinks with him. But now oh, gonna... hey. <laughs> you know what was funny over the weekend? Funny, sad. <clears throat> See, Steph, my cough is persisting. Um, I think it was like I the night. Okay, I, I was wondering if, if that was done on purpose and I thought you were you're trying to stop somebody from saying something. <laughs> no, but he it is helpful. He uses it for both, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But um, over the weekend, okay, uh, you know how, like, like doomsday cults are, like, coming alive again. So, like, you know, the people prophesying the, the rapture and all this stuff are, like, back in action for some reason. I guess the Israel thing. Anyway, so someone on, 
<laughs> someone, <laughs> so someone on Facebook was sharing this thing. It was like this dude was trying to come up with all this like ancient nonsense, like ancient aliens Bible style on how the rapture would be a certain date and time. It was like either 2026 or definitely before 2030. Anyway, but the reason they were doing it was they were getting all these like sixes and threes and numbers and their source material was the painting of uh, the last supper with Jesus. So, <laughs> as, as the, so they're going, I'm like, do that. Do they think this is like accurate representation? Like they had an artist like set down at the last supper and like in great detail. I'm like, no, this is some dude like, you know, wait, wait, thousands wait. of years. Yeah. Are you new to this conspiracy theory <clears throat> that Da Vinci was given divine? Is this new to you? That's new to me. Now, I don't know. Okay. That. Now that you say what? that, if that's where, okay, wait now, now that you say that, okay. If that's where they're coming from, I, I did, I guess that was like very deep, deep down. So that's where it's coming from. It's not that's like hundred percent it, where it's coming from. If you look at the painting of the last supper, Da Vinci was like a, a scientist and a brilliant mind. And there's weird stuff in the last supper. There's the, um, what is it? The, um, what's that spiral called? That's in nature everywhere. I forget. The Fibonacci sequence. Thank you. So that exists throughout, but that you can find that in most paintings because it, yeah, anyway, because Da Vinci was an occultist. Right, he was an occultist, and then he had, like, there's this whole theory that, like, he was putting all of these hidden meanings into this painting. There's, like, an arm with a knife that doesn't have a body attached to it. There aren't enough legs for the amount of people sitting at the uh, table. Uh, hold, here's the thing. Hold my coffee. Okay. Hold yeah, on. there's, like, color codes. <laughs> so there's this whole theory that da Vinci had secret knowledge that he put into this painting that was both oh, divine and on the level of, like, the Knights Templar and all this. You, this is so okay. So that I don't know if that's where that guy's coming from, but probably. Okay. Well, the one I saw was because there was like there. Was, the one I saw was like yeah. There was like because there were three pillars in the window and three windows and like three people standing in between them. It was like three and three and three makes six or makes nine. But then if you divide it and add something, it makes six and this number like so. I don't know if it was the Da Vinci thing, but it was definitely from the painting. But I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes, that's yep, a fun rabbit that. trail to go down on the internet if you're ever bored. I am <laughs> never that bored. You know, I will never be that bored. <laughs> these are, these are, these are right. literally, they're literally devil worshippers that have it. The, 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 to, here's the thing. <clears throat> this is what was discovered eventually. That there was a persistent occult, witch cult in Western Europe despite their quote unquote conversion to Christianity. Always been the case. And that and this is why they communicated through symbols, because they would go to show up in church every Sunday. But they had to perpetuate their I mean it, it's basically the Gnostics all over again. See the the thing about it is like people talk about how the Gnostics were defeated. No. Like the Gnostics Absolutely won. not. They won. Like if you <laughs> if you read Gnostic literature, the Roman Catholic Church adopted most Gnostic literature. They didn't call it scripture. But Literally, like, all the Marian doctrines came from the Proto Evangelion of James, which is a Gnostic gospel. Like this idea that the Gnostics somehow lost is nonsense. They won, and and they will win in this world. Because you know it's 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 Satan's world. Now wait a minute. The term is... Gnostic gospel doesn't have the same academic meaning as the Gnostics as a group, right? Uh, so James yeah, being a Gnostic <laughs> gospel that that's like a, an academic term for a non-canonized. It doesn't mean that it's affiliated with the Gnostics as believers. No, no, not at all. It means that it was a Gnostic gospel because there are non. Gnostic Gospels. There are just non-canonical Gospels, but they're not called Gnostic Gospels. The Gnostics actually were, te like the Gospel of Thomas, specifically yeah, the, For example, the Gospel the of Mary, the Gospel of Judas. Yes, they all specifically teach the tenets of Gnosticism, the cult. Like, this is like where the Manichaeans were, this is like all this stuff, like, it's all connected. So, like, when you read stuff in early church history, there was a fight like when Justin Martyr was writing about a bunch of stuff, so he wrote to Trypho and he wrote to a couple of Gnostics. So like when he is battling Gnosticism, it's the actual Gnosticism, not just like some other weird thing. 
Josh. So you're saying the academic term Gnostic always refers to the group of people in every case. Like, I, I guess I didn't know that. No, 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 no. Well, no, you can be a Gnostic atheist. Gnostic just means like knowledge, like secret or hidden right. knowledge. Like it's so that's why like, like the, the Gnostic gospel of James, I didn't know was attributed to the Gnostic group. Correct. That is correct. Yes. So like, so like the, you know, like the gospel of Thomas is the most strong example of a Gnostic gospel. The proto-evangelion of James um, is, is a Gnostic gospel in one sense, but it goes through other stuff that isn't in the gospel. So it's, it goes beyond it being a gospel because it's not just about Jesus. Cause it has a whole, like the first few chapters are about Mary's mother, like not like Mary. even. So like, there's like a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, we don't even know who Mary's mother is in the scripture. Like it's not mentioned. Uh, but this is where like all of the Marian doctrines for the Catholic, for the Roman Catholic Church come from is this one single doctrine. Like it's kind of crazy. Not all. Like, they, you know, I'd have to read it. Well, not all, you. but like, yeah. I mean, like the, the Assumption of Mary, you know, 1850, like that didn't come about from that but like the yeah, yeah. base marian doctrines like you know like yeah I, I should never use all and never um you know what i should say is a lot of the marian you should never doctrines. use never so like, never use never but like so for instance like um a really good example is you know the um the proto-evangelion of james describes mary at one years old, standing up and walking and taking exactly seven steps, right? Again, this is putting forth secret knowledge. Um, <laughs> then her mother realized that she was holy. And you can go read all this stuff. It's really fascinating. Anyway, so um, she realized that she's holy. So then she takes her to the temple at, I believe, three years old. And then just drops her off in the Holy of Holies, where no one can go except for the high priest once a year. But because Mary is quote unquote holy, she just rolls Full in. Full of there. grace. And, yeah. And so Mary lives in the Holy of Holies in the temple um, from the age of three until the age of 14. And she's fed by. She's fed Whoa. by. Uh, oh. Well, actually, she's fed by angels, but it never talks about, like, <laughs> where she's using the restroom in the Holy of Holies. Like, I mean, just like, it's just pure Gnosticism through and through because, like, the some body goddess is worshiping some nonsense. goddess worshiping nonsense. Yeah, oh, it's complete nonsense. <laughs> but, like, when you, when you actually look at Roman Catholic sources and Jerome and all these other things, like, this is where they're getting this from, is that they, because the canon you know, was kind of like cattywampus at the time, and people were like, oh, I don't know, this could be good, or, you know, the Shepherd of Hermes, or whatever. Um, you know, they, they just didn't know, and so they would make... So the first ones to accept the Proto-Evangelion of James outside of the Gnostic community were Origen and his teacher, and I can't remember the dude's name off the top of my head, because it starts with an A, and everybody had an A name in the second century. It was ridiculous. Anyway, so... Um, Anyway, so those are the two first guys. So then when the Eastern Church, like the EO, will talk about how Origen is a heretic, this is specifically what they're talking about, is that Origen bought into the Proto-Evangelion of James, which even the Eastern Church rejects as a Gnostic gospel. It's very interesting. I have questions for them. Like if Mary was hand-fed by angels and her urine was miraculously removed elsewhere and all that good stuff, why was she afraid at the Annunciation? I think they just, just burn you. I think they just burn you. Yeah. I think they just they think they just give you a quick yawn hus. Um but yeah. No, that's a really good question, Steph. I don't know. Write that one down. Keep it in your back pocket. Hmm. See, the biblical documents are brilliant because if if you read the Quran, it's like too much information. It becomes very muddled and confusing and inconsistent. And the biblical writers, and this is part of what actually was so convincing for me of their inerrancy and, and the idea that God had his hand on every word of scripture, right, is that it gives exactly enough information to be clear, but never enough to make a confusing, silly doctrine, like the idea of Mary being in the Holy of Holies. It tells you so beautifully and so simply 
that she was alarmed. The angel comforted her. She had a question. And then she said, I am the Lord's servant, right? Like I, I completely submit to this. I obey. Done. Beautiful. There's no more speculation to be had. And it's kind of fun to imagine like, what was Mary's walk home like? You know, did she like, what did she, but the Bible doesn't, it doesn't force that information on you. You're like required as a human being to develop these sort of thoughts about it on your own. And that's what makes it so anomalous as a document is that you're not being, you're not given enough information to, for it to be driven into your brain and unquestioned. It's like, it leaves you with questions that are meant to be discussed I always thought that was just really beautiful. But if you read other ancient documents, they're not written that way. It's very strange. And then they're all like that, you know? So I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's the most beautiful book ever written. It is. Like, it's it's poetic. It's beautiful. It's like the, the, yeah, like I said, the information delivered is there's no way this was done by humans. And then to say that it is consistent like that across multiple cultures, thousands of years, multiple voices, multiple writing styles and languages, it's always just like kind of it'll floor you. If you study other ancient history, the Bible itself will floor you because the document just doesn't make any sense. Unbelievably like, beautiful. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense that it exists. So I don't know, kind of a little tangent there, but I always think about that. This is why when the Holy Spirit stops speaking, we stop asking. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I mean, if you like Nate makes this point all the time, right? Like, <clears throat> this is one of Nate's points that I really like. Is like, no one's saying that you can't go and read the Apocrypha. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. It's just that when you actually read the Apocrypha, you're like, what is this giving me that the other 66 didn't cover? You know, it's like, and, 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 and it's like clearly inferior. I mean, and it's not to say, you know, and, and deuterocanonical just means second canon. And everyone in the early church and in the medieval church, well, actually, all of church history, everybody has always said the Apocrypha are fine, but we just don't use them. We can use them for faith and practice, but we do not use them for doctrine. So there's a huge difference between using something like the Didache for faith and practice. Like, how did they practice communion? You know, it is a first century document, you know, like, okay, cool. But we don't use it for doctrine because it has some really wacky stuff in it. Anywho, um, I don't know. Did you check dissenter yet, um, Nate? See if there's anything new up there. Oh no, I thought I thought you threw out all the stuff that was that was new. Those like two things. Uh, that was if, just, if I just hit protestia, so I didn't I didn't get to go through dissenter. I don't even know how to spell dissenter. It's it's like D S S like right D -S -S, like it's S right like it's D I S S N T R. Ah. For the record, I know how to spell the center. I meant the specific site. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, they, they I, do. I like feel good. I, I got into Fort it, 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 used to be, it used to be called Reformation Charlotte, but then they, they changed the name because, like, they weren't really talking about stuff that was going on in Charlotte, North Carolina. They were talking about kind of global stuff. So the, the, uh, the broaden their horizons. Has anyone yeah, so this is the Mike Dickel thing. I, well, I'm driving, so let's I will see. check out. And, and by the way, I have to finish writing. I got to finish writing my RFP today, so I, when I finish driving around, I'm going to have to dip because I've got about seven more pages to write. Yeah, this will be a short day today. Is my kid's X-ray day? Yay! We get to go find out what's actually wrong with her foot. We'll uh, put that in prayer for sure. Oh, thank you. So, so Mark, what I mean by faith and practice is like there's nowhere in the New Testament it's called out how to do communion, right? You know, there's not there's not an order of service for worship. There's not, you know, th these are things that are just kind of left up to the individual churches because there's no specific instructions. But what we can see from the Apocrypha um, or from other first century writings is how are they doing stuff back in the first century? And we can use that to guide us, but it wouldn't be binding. And so when we say faith and practice, we don't mean, um, 
you know, like Second Timothy three sixteen and 17, like, you know, all scripture is God breathed. We're not saying that we're throwing that out. We're just saying like, in terms of historical documents, it's interesting and helpful to see how things were done thousands of years ago. It's not binding on us to practice it. So I just need to be more clear on that. So, so, like, for instance, the reformers didn't reject tradition. It's just that they subjected tradition to the Word of God. And where tradition conflicted with, with the Word of God, they threw it out. Where tradition agreed with the Word of God, they kept it. You know, because traditions aren't bad things. All right. Dissenter. Let's see. Okay. Oh, come on. Stop telling me how to spell it. I'm looking for the... Is it the dissenter? No. Yeah, I think so. Hold on. I'll just... That automatic spell check. That automatic spell check. I'll get you in trouble now. Get you in but trouble. The dissenter is spelled correctly, right? Yeah, it's spelled correctly, right? The dissenter. It's... Of course your sorry, microphone it's, sucks uh, again. Your microphone sucks again. I'm getting, like, sorry. tons of feedback. Tons of feedback. Blame the German. I mean, I do in general, but. <laughs> Aren't you using like AirPod? What's that? What's that noise? I'm hearing a familiar unmuting noise, but I can't remember which device uses it. Every time you unmute. Every time you unmute. That one? Yeah, yeah we like, hear a feedback. Do do. You have an echo, but it, like what? You're not using AirPods? No, my car took over the audio. Take the power back. Put your AirPods in. It's okay. We'll suffer. Okay, this is the dissenter.org. That's not the Christian news site, right? That's not the dissenter we're looking. This is not the dissenter we're looking for. I, I just text. I just texted you the link to the room. It's in the room. Okay. Sure. Hang on. I'm being chased again by someone in Fortnite. Let me get to a safe spot. <laughs> you know, priorities and first stuff. First things first. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to survive two more people to get a new uh, a new achievement for surviving the longest. The one who conquers. <laughs> oh, one more. Just gonna make oh, it through one, one more. more. Just gonna make it through one more. Bro, this morning I got a call from a client real early, and I was like, "What's going on?" And like, there was like twenty seconds of silence, and I was like, "What is going on?" And apparently, the uh, uh, the manager of their shop it's a it's a big scenic shop where they build stuff for theme parks um she died over the weekend um and so that was oh. kind of a crazy problem oh. this morning and that is literally the second person in that position that has died in was the she last back year. was she back huh was she vaccinated was she vaccinated oh uh, i have oh. Yeah, she was a she was a uh rotund uh lesbian type uh, and, uh, <laughs> and then hey. uh, the other lady died in a motorcycle accident so it's like dude it's like two people in this position have both died in the last year just completely unexpectedly it's been crazy speaking of that sketch jab was anyone besides Pastor Mark watching the Bills game last night shout out to Pastor Mark he and I watched the Bills game together it was great but I want to know doesn't Damar Hamlin not look like Damar Hamlin? I'm convinced that guy's a con. Oh, you're one of those people. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't think he made it. I think this is like a government conspiracy. So you're, I'm looking at him. I'm like, that's not the same kid. Hmm. Steph, have you heard of the transpocalypse? The what? The transpocalypse. The what? Trans buffalo? The, tra the transpocalypse. Like trans. No. The, tra the transpocalypse. I like the trans buffalo much better, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't know what my brain did there. Well, let's hear what what, the, what is the trans <laughs> transpocalypse? What is that? So it's a conspiracy theory. It's so nutty that I don't even believe in it. Um, Whoa, Prashant, if it's a theory you don't prescribe, subscribe to, it must be absolutely insane. Let's go. I'm so ready. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, 
Thank you, man. Don't leave us. <laughs> this is the theory, right? Basically, every single person that you see, every everyone who's a public figure, okay, whether it's um, actors and actresses, whether it's um, TV stars, uh, musicians, athletes, royalty, every male is a female, and every female is a male. And the whole point, okay. is that they're gonna reveal it down the line. And they're gonna be like, "Well, you lost it after this." Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, there's gonna be a day where all is revealed about the true genders of each of these icons. Ah, oh. uh, okay. So Tom Hanks is really Thomasina Hanks. Exactly. Uh, you know, Michelle Thomas Obama Cena. is really Michael Obama, right? Okay, gotcha. I gotcha. Oh, Big Mike, 2024, Big Mike. Well, but that 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 one is like outside of the transpocalypse. Yeah, <laughs> that's in a thing of its own, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're all just cool with Demar Hamlin being a clone. That's fine. All right, I guess we're okay with that. Same with mm-hmm. Biden. Some people say the same thing about Biden. Yeah, the dimple. Yeah, I mean, Hundred percent. No. Okay. Listen. Do we have any? Do we have any Star Trek fans in here besides Chris? No. Okay, listen, I'm going to talk to nope. Chris for a second. Chris, you know in Deep Space Nine where it's like the, what are the names of those guys again that are like the, um, they're Wayun. what's he called, you know, all the Wayuns. And then there's like one of the Wayuns that dies and then he becomes a puppet and they have to like use him as a puppet, but he's actually dead on the ship to trick the other... At this point, I think that's what Joe Biden is. He has electrodes on him, and someone is controlling him by a remote from somewhere. Vorta. Joe Biden doesn't even know that he's Joe Biden. We like that more than the lizard people theory? More than the reptilians? Oh, you know, someone, my, oh my gosh, one of my neighbors thinks, like, swears Biden's been dead for years, and he's, he's an actor being played by James Woods. Or, I mean, uh, he, he's being played <laughs> by the actor James Woods. I'm like... <laughs> I'm moving to Florida. <laughs> I'm going to use that one. That's funny. Oh my God. It is so funny when we're like hanging out up by the pool and like all these new people, um, like, you know, will show up cause the snow people are coming, um, from like Canada and, you know, Steph's Nick of the woods. Um, so they'll just be talking. And they're like, "Oh, hey, nice to meet you guys. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, how's life?" Da da da. And they're like, "Man, political stuff's kind of rough, right? Like, I don't know about this Joe Biden. Like, you know, trying to like kind of ease into it." Um, it's like, "It's not Joe Biden." And they're like, "What?" They're like, "It's not Joe Biden. Joe Biden's dead. He's been dead for years. James Woods is playing him." They're like, "Uh, um, um," <laughs> and, and, and they're like, "Same thing with Hillary." Hillary's not Hillary. She's a Gitmo. She's being detained. Like she's being guarded. She's a Gitmo right now. That's not her. That's not her. You're seeing. They're like, okay. Uh, like to see their jaw just dropped, and then they look at me, and I just give them the biggest like tilt of my head. I'm just like, yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> wow. I am packing my bags as we speak. <laughs> I am ready. I'm, t- I'm sure vacating the premises. We are coming to Florida. Oh, and I, I, I don't know if I've said, said this before. Like, I'm partially responsible. Like, okay, th- this guy was from New York. This guy is from Queens. <laughs> like, about, about like five years ago, four yeah, or five years ago, <laughs> when, they first, when they first moved here, his family, he, w- he went to Juilliard. He was a professional dancer. <laughs> he had, he like, he's been all over the world on like cruise lines in China. Like he's been all over the world performing and like, as like a, a dancer. And for the last like 20 years, he's had his own like prestigious uh, school um, in that area. Um, and it was all about just the arts and liberal and anyway, whenever he first got here, like one of the first things he said, cause someone was like kind of conservative around like, you know, the, the community area. And he just kind of, had this look on his face, like this scowl. And, you know, I didn't make my political bent known for like a year. Anyways, so he's just like, um, oh my gosh, uh, I can't even believe that guy. Can you even believe that? Like all these concerned people, like I can't even stand it. Like he's new, right? Like I'm just meeting him. Um, and he, he knew I was vegan then. 
So, you know, I guess he was assumed as one of them. So he's like, I can't even believe this. He's like, I'm just going to get a Kamala Harris t-shirt and I'm going to come up here and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to rub it in their face. Like, I can't believe these conservative people like Kamala Harris. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so anyways, that's who we were talking about. So then one day he comes over to my house. And every time he'd like come over to my house because uh, we lived right down the road. So, you know, we were friends. It's just like, you know, we, I steered away from politics. And, you know, he, he had no idea. So he wasn't really in the political world. He just knew, you know, conservatives are bad, liberals amazing. Um, and so I, I would turn the TV channel because it was always on, like, you know, some conservative outlet. And he would come over, so I'd flip the channel real fast. I'm like, well, I don't need to start trouble today. Um, anyways, one day, after, like, six months of this, I'm like, you know what? And Trump was giving, like, this big speech. I'm like, he could just deal with it. It's my house. So I'm like, okay, let's see what goes on. So uh, he comes in, he starts talking like Trump was speaking. He's like, oh my gosh. And he's like super, super New York accent. Like, oh my, I can't even do it. Imagine a New York accent. He's like, I can't even believe it. Can you believe this guy like Trump? Oh, I can't even stand his voice. Like, oh my gosh. Like, what do you think of this guy? I'm like, I love him. He's like, what? I'm like, he's amazing. He's like, you for real? I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah. He's like, why? So, you know, we went through it. I explained everything. He's like, are you serious? He's like, I, I had no idea. I had no idea about this stuff. I'm like, yeah, man, look it up, look it up. And then, like, forever since that day, he's been, like, super, super hardcore, like, right wing. Um, and then some. He's left me in the dust. So, uh, I mean, you know, hence Joe Biden's being played by an actor and Hillary's in Gitmo, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm like, all right, man, look, look, look. And, and he was also, like, you know, said he was Catholic, but really not uh, by any measurable means. Um, so, uh, so he's going from one extreme to the to the other. Seems like. absolutely. So I'm like, dude, you're going too far, man. You're going too far. He's like, no, no, no. And and then like the whole Q thing, like he's super Q. I'm like, dude, you've gone too far. I'm like, come back, come he's back to the light. Like, he's like, no, man, you don't believe this. You don't believe. You really don't think that Trump's in control of the government. I'm like, dude, there is no way Trump is in control of the government. Dude, <laughs> he's like, no, he's like, no, it's all an act. It's all an act. You got to wake people up. You got to let them know. I'm like, dude. Uh, come on, man. I haven't led you wrong. I'm like, Trump is good, but he's not in control of things. This is not like a super plan to expose people. Like, no. Uh, anyway, so so now he's he's moved on to um, – oh, crap. What were we actually talking the, about? The night leaves in, uh, the trans apocalypse-like kind of stuff. <laughs> I ha you know, I, I, I haven't heard him say that one yet. I think I'll present it to him and see what he does with it. <laughs> Oh, 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 and then, oh, and, we're, hang on, and, and then, and then he starts going to church with me, right? So, like, after he like gets oh, super, no. super right wing Q, um, um, now he starts going to my church. So now he is in, man. He is into my church just at the same time where, like, you know, lady pastors are unveiled, and I'm like, ah, he's like, I love it, I love it, it's amazing. I'm like, ah. I'm like, man, what do I do? Like, I got this guy in here, except now he's like even deeper on the religious side now. So now, like, every time I talk to this guy, he's got a new thing. He's like, dude, Revelation's unfolding. Like, Revelation, did you see this? Like, here, watch this video. And it's always some guy that looks like they're in, like, a bunker, but not a proper one. It's, like, a trailer that they've dug a hole and put underground and covered it with, like, a, a little bit of dirt. And, it, it, and I'm like, what? where do you find these people? And he's like, the heralds are coming. The new world order is now. I'm like, he's like, you know, run to the woods, all this type of stuff. I'm like, no, man, no. I'm like, you know, the world is definitely ending, but but I mean, not how they say. I'm right. like, no. We're not back. the far we're not the far right. We've just been right so far. <laughs> like, Nate, you know what to do. I have the total solution for this, and Steph is gonna love it. A final right, solution. You guys ready? You, you guys ready? Yes. Introduce him to Douglas Wilson. Okay, so just write this down. <laughs> and so okay. I'm gonna do this. Hang on. I have another recommendation. Hang on, let me write e this down. E. Michael Jones. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is this is gonna be good. So Douglas Wilson is a very reformed dude uh -huh. who also is a theonomist. And so it's all about like Christian nationalism taking over the country for good. Uh -huh. Like uh, he, it will be <laughs> But he's solid theologically, so he will not. <laughs> so only... like you're gonna you're gonna give him the red meat he wants for like end of days world order stuff, but you're gonna get him on the right road to Jesus. Correct. <laughs> That's hilarious. From if by right road, you mean Christ? <laughs> Do what? Who's who's not a theonomist here? 
Me. Me. I'm not a Theonomist. Yeah, me. I mean, I'm a strong supporter that if I was the dictator, then I would support a dictatorship, but not for anyone but me. Um, <laughs> but but no, I, I don't think, uh, you know, Christianity should, like, force stuff on people. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe you're onto something for Sean. I mean, at this point, if it's like, you know, we can't just be nice and peaceful. It's like either, like, let ultimate evil reign, or maybe, I don't know, be like, fine, you want it? Here, take some. Like, let's force some Christianity on you. You're going to cry that we're doing that anyway, so maybe we should. <laughs> I know, right? I, I may need to reevaluate that. But, but, but I, I may need to reevaluate that at some point, but currently, uh, no, I agree with Chris and Beckel. <laughs> yeah, like, Doug Wilson takes it to another level. Like, you know, he's he lives in Moscow, Idaho, uh, famously, and um, he's been on, like, 60 Minutes and all kinds of stuff. So he's, like, pretty famous. Um, but he like, let's put it this way. James White debates him on theonomy, like, and so they'll have friendly debates and like Keith Foskey, who does all the denominational videos, you know, like if your denomination were, you know, guns, you know, what would they be (laughs) like that guy? He's, he's really funny, but he went and did a show with Doug Wilson as well. So Doug Wilson also believes in some crazy stuff like it's trash uh like federal something called federal vision where the baptism of your children in the into the covenant the saving faith of the father covers the wife and all the children which is completely nonsense but it's it's and who who says that so that's something called federal vision that they're trying to no, debate who, who, amongst sh- who shares it or who takes the stance that they're for that you said double uh, Doug Wilson teaches this. I, I mean, I don't know who else. Outside but you said he was Doug like Wilson accepts it. You said he was like solid. That, well, that's he's solid, solid on most things. Like his theology is pretty good. He just has a couple of wacky things. I'm just, I'm pointing out the very wacky things that are very fringe. All right. Well, I mean, but most of his stuff is really solid, and he'll stop being your friend. Will stop being as crazy if he goes Doug Wilson route. So just kind of crazy. Is there any way to, like, share a video of this guy where it looks like what he's used to, to, like, you know, wean him in, like, Doug Wilson, like, in, in like, a, you know, like, disheveled, yeah, kind of like, crazy eyes. like, disheveled, <laughs> kind of wild-eyed, like, guys, I haven't slept in 46 hours, like, people are watching me, but here's what you need to know, write this down. Um, any, that's any... Bob. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, well, at least that's this guy Bob believes Bob that... is talking bulldog from from Licky. Well, Bob would be worse because at least, uh, you know, at least this guy believes, you know, in the, in the right Jesus. So, I mean, Bob would be, Bob would be a downgrade. Yeah. So, so just point Doug Wilson, man, and he might move to Idaho because that's where the faithful (laughs) are moving. I mean, gosh, I might need to move to Idaho. Where are we going to go, Chris, when, uh, when Florida gets completely overran? Are we going to, like, steal a boat um, and, like, sell up the coast somewhere? I mean, we could, or we could, like, throw all the families in, a in like, a little old short bus, uh, school bus, pack up with smokes and tequila and head for the Mexican border, find a lawless place to hide out. <laughs> Stuff would be banging down our door, like, no, we want to come. We're like, no. Like she's like, I just got to Florida. Yeah. Like there's no room in our, there is no room in our commandeered ark. Well, I'm telling you, if it goes down, down, like down, 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 you will not find me in the wilds of Alaska. That's where I will be. Forget the Mexican border. I'm going to be where humans can barely survive. That's where I'll be. Yeah, I like that. Like no one really wants to mess with people in like a frozen tundra. Exactly. And it gets to 55 in the summer, which is nice. So, you know, it'll be good. Oh, but the mosquitoes are out of control. In Alaska? Your, yeah, in a, your, your, your silence speaks volumes. You may want to research it. Yeah, like whenever it gets like, gets like warm in like the summer months. Yeah, man, there is like ungodly, like more mosquitoes than like five, like 500 Florida's could ever have. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, check out the mosquito population. Like people have to wear nets, and like in the in the morning when like uh, they wake up, their nets are like black because they're so so covered with mosquitoes. It, it is otherworldly. So yeah, while Nate friend. and I and our families will be on the beach hanging out drinking <laughs> tequila, Stephanie's going to be shaking in the corner from her malaria. <laughs> well, not now because we told oh, her. Whatever, it's fine. Doing God's work. Hey, who's Nate Guest? I see Nate Guest. Who's Nate Guest? Oh, uh, that means someone clicked a link from the Discord that Nate posted. So yeah, Nate... but they're here on stage. So identify yourself. I know. Yeah, that they. Oh can't... God, is that my neighbor? <laughs> it's not a real person. It's probably. Let's see. It's probably Rob, because Rob is the last one who just came into the room, and it leaves that little mark when he comes in. Like the person who clicks the Discord link, there's a double. Rob shows up in the audience, and then somehow this thing shows up on stage. <laughs> huh. So fun, so man. this is how old I am, Nate. So like hey, when that was going down, um my buddy Ian was working for me. Um and he's a he's a funny dude and uh atheist guy. And so He's writing on the whiteboard, like, contingency plans for Y2K, you know, and they're like, you know, it's just technology stuff, you know. And then the very last one that he slipped in was um, pickup truck full of guns, food, and booze, and run for the Mexican border. <laughs> as, the last, <laughs> as the last contingency <laughs> You have any Bitcoin, Chris? Yeah, sure. I got crypto. Did you get it when the getting was good? Uh, no, I turned eighteen thousand dollars into six thousand dollars, but I'm holding uh, until it's back to eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I just saw this interview with like this weird guy that like was a founder or partial founder. Like he's completely nuts, but but he uh, he apparently thinks it's going to uh, start going up. Because like everyone's talking about like gold and silver and all this other stuff, hope uh, you know like kind of banking on the uh, apocalypse and the doing away with like like with like regular paper money, so to like revert to that. And this guy's banking on the no, it may be an apocalypse, but technology will survive enough to you know keep cryptocurrency going. So it seems like you know whenever this does happen, because it's inevitable, um, one of these are going to be big winners. So. Uh, you know, I, like I, I, I would say more of the crypto thing unless like, you know, all, all digital stuff is like somehow done away with because the people that want gold, it's like, dude, if the world like goes to an apocalypse tomorrow, like what it would be necessary for gold to start being, you, you know, a form of currency. Like it's going to take a long time before people melt down gold coins and start like, you know, using gold to trade. Like you're going to have years and years of lawlessness, hell, like. No one's going to be wanting to buy stuff. They're going to be like, you know, murdering for it. So I'm like, you know, if you can somehow manage to survive like a decade or more before people are civilized enough to start needing currency again. Um, yeah, I, I don't think gold's going to be super great because of that. I mean, it would be super great for the people who, you know, Mad Max, like murder, rob and take the gold and hold on to it long enough. But for the people who are like, you know, savvy investors, like looking down their, their thick rim glasses they're going to be the first ones to go. It's not going to benefit them. Oh my goodness. Matrix. Oh yeah, you're bad, bro. Steph, do you have insight while Chris uh, finds his signal? Do I have insight about what? Do you, uh, wow. What? I didn't hear you. What was the question? Do you have insight on the topic? I was just raising. Uh, no, and if anyone asks, I do not own crypto. Get out of my bank accounts, government. None of your business. <laughs> it's the whole idea is when someone asks if you have it, you say, nope. No, I do not. You would lie. I'm just saying, is it a lie if no one can prove that? <laughs> Hold on, wait, let me formulate this argument a little better. <laughs> yes. Make lying okay again. 
Hey, it worked for Rahab. Ah, uh, hey, you know. Maybe something to it. Just kidding. Don't lie. Lying's bad. There's a commandment for people that like try to be like, no, no, it just means like you shouldn't lie, but there's times where you can lie. I mean, you know, if you want to get Le Levitical, there is a commandment that says, do not lie. I think that may, be the a... second that may be the second shortest verse in the Bible. Like, do not <laughs> lie. <laughs> right. What's the official stance on omission, though? <laughs> um, I, 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 the Bible equates deceit to lying, so would you equate omission to deceit? Because if you if you someone can, like, asks me if I have crypto and I just stand there glassy eyed like I'm having a stroke, is that deceit? I'm gonna say my personal conviction is yes. no. Like if you don't answer, you just don't answer. <laughs> so Chris would would think that he is compelled to speak. I I would not feel under any compulsion if I spoke and was like misleading. I would equate that to lying, which is bad. Uh, but but to just not answer, no. I, right. Pastor Mark, would you care to weigh in? If, if someone asks you something, and basically if you answer, you're going to incriminate yourself or lie, and you don't want to do that, if you just don't answer, is that lying? Don't ask Pastor Mark. He has such a sound moral compass, it's offensive. I'm trying to find the loophole, and Pastor Mark is about to smush it. But if you're going to try the loophole, you got to find you got to find the strongest case for this, um, and, and then, you know, find your way to loophole it pastor Steph. not a pastor oh my goodness am i still in the am i still in the matrix no you're good here first of all stephanie j i sent you a norman geisler article the king of all the arminians um <laughs> on ethics like, he's a calvinist excellent. what are you talking about he's not a calvinist i promise you i just 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 read more about he him he literally wrote a book he I literally wrote the book against calvinism like he literally wrote a book against calvinism he, he didn't write the bible in the intro to the book he identifies himself <laughs> as a cal anyway that's, that's well, well anyway before we, we jump to norman geisler uh pastor mark did share a loophole <laughs> pastor mark i'm so surprised i'm i'm impressed he said say i'm surprised you'd ask that is that morally acceptable if mark does it then i'm I'm adding it to my repertoire. <laughs> that is technically the truth. Anyway, in this very excellent Norman Geisler <laughs> article, um, he goes through the entire thing for every type of, like, he just throws relative morality out. out. He's just like, in relative morality, anything goes, who cares? Like, you know, we're not even going to discuss that. But there are different systems of absolute morality. And he examines each system. Um, he was a philosopher by trade. He examines each system. Um, and then get asks the question, is it okay to lie to save a life, right? And so he answers that question according to each of those systems of absolute morality. And it's excellent. And then you can figure out, given the four systems of absolute morality, um, which where you fall. And it's actually extremely well done. It's very good. It's just um, the article is called Any Absolutes? absolutely so it's any absolutes question mark absolutely period and so um geisler's been dead for a long time but anyway so if you want a really good non-calvinist thinker that uh wrote on christian ethics he's your guy he wrote a whole book about this it's a it's norman geisler's book on ethics and it's very very good So just I love confirm, the Mark loophole. Steph, Mark is confirming that uh, omission is a loophole and is not lying if you just do not speak. Is that what I'm hearing? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. I'm walking out the door. That is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to figure out how I can utilize that. I mean, I think the better question is. Rahab, right? So the story of Rahab and the spies. And she is seen as one of the great, you know, in the hall of fame of faith, right? Um, and was also a descendant of, uh, the, in the line of Jesus. So like, Rahab lied in order to save the lives of the spies. 
Well, right, but that so, could have been a sin. It doesn't. It doesn't excuse yeah, it. Yeah, like yeah. just because, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's like the people in the Hall of Faith were not. It's not like they lived a sinless life. So it's like, well, they're in the Hall of Faith, you know, despite their sin, not because of their sin, if it's sin. So I would think that lying, because Leviticus says, do not lie. Um, so I, I would be inclined to say, yes, Rahab sinned, but so have we all. Yet she still ends up in the Hall of Faith. Well, see, here, here's my thing. Um, as we can see in the scripture, you know, Rahab committed this deed, you know, and, and as Chris pointed out, she was commended and remembered, you know, for the faith that, you know, that was, uh, you know, that, you know, that she had, you know, and we can see that in Hebrews 11 somewhere. And God did not hold her guilty for what she did because of the motive behind the deed. So we can see that in the past, in the chapter, Rahab expressed how she heard the stories about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, you know, we, you know, her language expresses this, that she had faith in him. So when she lied to the men of Jericho, uh, I, I think it was solely to, you know, well, well, we we all know that it was solely to protect another person. It was not out of self gain or preservation, etc. And in the same way that David is called a murderer, why not because he actually physically killed Uriah, but because of what was in his heart. So his heart was to hide something. It was for a selfish gain, and he put Uriah on the hottest spot of the battle. So that he can, he could be killed most likely in order to hide the fact that uh, the baby is not Uriah's, you know, son or child. So I, I think it's, it's kind of that kind of thing. I think God is going to go by your. Obviously, it's not a prescription. There's not saying it's okay to lie in every case, but I think with the situation with Rahab, God is going by the intent and the motive behind the deed. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah. I, so similar I, I, to Rahab, God will totally forgive me for omitting my crypto. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a perfectly justifiable situation. Well, well yeah, it's like, you know, it, game, though, like, are you worried about getting robbed? Are you worried? Get, I mean, because well, I, right? well, I don't I don't think, want the I don't, government I don't, knowing anything it doesn't have to know. You know, oh, that, Steph, that's, they know they already know. But, but they no, I don't do. think I don't think Rahab's intent was forgiven because, again, that I mean. Do not lie. I mean, you know, she wasn't an Israelite, so I mean, right, because Jericho. Anyways, but I mean, you know, as far as God goes, the command is the command. So, like, I don't think in, intent really matters, but it's a not, it's a wash, right? Because, you know, all we're doing is saying what? Okay, Rahab undoubtedly sinned plenty of times in her life, just like we all do. So even if this was one more sin, fine. She was clearly forgiven, um, which is the same reason she can be in the Hall of Faith, which is the same reason we can go to heaven. Like, it's not like, oh, well, you know, that time Vekel told that lie, was it for the greater good or was it for selfish gain? It doesn't matter. He's sinned plenty of times, whether or not that one time was a sin or not. He's sinned plenty of times, but he can still be forgiven, and that's how we can all go to heaven. So maybe, Steph, mm. if you still got that link, it's probably buried hundreds of messages up, but... Um, if you still got that link that I DM'd you in Discord um, about uh, the uh, article from Norman Geisler, um, maybe you should pin it at the top because I think that so ethics is a very interesting discussion, and Pastor Mark brings up an excellent point that our motives do not um, our motives do not control whether or not something is sinful. So, like you know. God looks at the heart, but he also looks at actions. And so when we say that God looks at the heart, what we mean is that our sinful motives are just as impugned as our sinful actions. If we have a right motive, but a sinful action that does not dis, uh, that does not balance out the sinful action. And so like this article talks about all this stuff. It's, it's a, it's about a 5,000 word article. It's, it's, you know, well, but it's well, a really good read. Well, what my, my question would be then, um, if it's not the motive that, because Jesus talks about this in Matthew 15, 18 through 20, you know, it's not what goes out of the mouth, but what comes from the heart, you know, um, where do we see any evidence of God condemning Rahab for this deed? I mean, she, we see the complete opposite, actually. She's honored uh, in Hebrews 11, in the genealogy of Christ in Matthew, uh, in James chapter 2. Um, but I don't see the other side. I don't see her being condemned for uh, she's if anything, she's 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 recognized as a harlot, as a prostitute, uh, but nothing else. We don't hear her saying, 
uh, he, she was a lying prostitute or anything of the sort. So I'm just wondering, uh, what, what are you guys' thoughts? Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, in the hierarchy, I'd say, you know, if we go lying, they're just be like, she's a prostitute. What do you think, Steph? So you're saying, oh, wait, that yeah, was probably not great. I don't have to uh, <laughs> comment on every lying prostitute that comes across your desk, Chris. Maybe you uh, use your man brain, figure this one out on your own. You lying whore! <laughs> I'm Babylon. Just I'm Babylon, right? <laughs> Just get it all. <laughs> what do you think, Steph? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's <laughs> well, that's always I'm been my view. Laughing. That's always been my view whenever an atheist asks me, like, well, well, what if, what it happens if you got a bunch of Jews who come to you want to hide in your base? <laughs> you know, are you gonna lie to the to, to the to the Nazis and blah 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 blah? You know, like, and, like just just ask if it's you. Like, what if you have a bunch of atheists? <laughs> I will turn you all in. How about that? Is that what you want? I, I will turn you all in because you know my conscience. Yeah, no, you know, at first before you do this, just like, hey, uh, there's a bunch of. Uh, uh, guys at Theonomous out here that want to kill you guys. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say you, Doug now, I'm going to turn you guys <laughs> over. I'm going to turn you Imagine guys over. Imagine an army of Chris's. <laughs> I'm going to turn you guys over into one condition. Do you turn Christ, turn to Christ or not? And they're going to say, <laughs> nope. Okay. Uh, officer, they're right over here. <laughs> an army, an army of Doug Wilson approves. <laughs> <laughs> Severe as the unbelievers. They're in the basement. Take them away. <laughs> That's great. Well, so that that would be my situation. Yeah, obviously God is not gonna. You know, I don't believe you can lose your salvation. So, you know, you're not going to lose your salvation because you lied to the Nazis for hiding a, a couple of Jews in the basement or hiding a couple of spies, um, you know, that kind of thing. But I do agree with you that, you know, a lie is a lie. Um, I'm just wondering for what motive, what's the motive? Um, you know, and uh, I think you can still be, you know, Luke chapter 12 talks about that parable, the two slaves that didn't wait on their master to return. And both of them committed uh, a sin, uh, but one did it out of ignorance and one did it out of rebellion. And the one that did it out of rebellion got uh, more lashes uh, or bigger punishment than the one that did it out of ignorance. And even going to the Old Testament, you see uh, offerings for sins of ignorance. So you got those kinds of things, too. Um, but here we have the situation with Rahab, who is... Well, again, she's mentioned in the genealogy of Christ and Matthew. She's mentioned in Hebrews 11, Hall of Faith. She's mentioned in James chapter 2. You know, and all of these times she's mentioned, it's in an honorable position. She was a Canaanite. Uh, was she a Canaanite? Yeah, she was, she was a harlot. She was a prostitute. And she lied to protect the two spies. I've and, changed my stance back. Oh, harlotry and lying is cool. <laughs> So, right. So, so like, so, right. So, so, okay. So in, in all of the mentions of Abraham, every time they mention Abraham, they don't talk about, you know, him offering up his wife as his sister and, and lying about that. They don't, you know, they don't talk about Abraham and all of his flaws or any of the other patriarchs for that matter, which we are shown, you know, these are not hagiographies, right? So like the idea that well, and if they were women, they would, so. There's that. Well, yeah. So, well, of course, because, you know, the patriarchy is good and right. Um, so, which Stephanie agrees with, so I don't know why, why that's a big deal. But anyway, so, um, that being said, like, we never see the sins of other people pointed out every time they're mentioned. And the fact that, uh, I'm just giving, I'm just, uh, we're just running through this, but like, so, for instance, Veckel, in the article from Geisler, philosophically, the position that you are describing is something called graduated uh, graduated um, equilibrium. Okay, graduated equilibrium simply means that uh, there are absolutes. When absolutes conflict, the higher absolute is the one that is in effect. Okay, and so 
this grad this this idea of graduated abs I'm sorry graduated absolutism absolutism not graduated equilibrium that's a different thing um, graduated absolutism is that when moral absolutes conflict then the higher absolute is the one that we select in order to be righteous this is a this is an ethical view that Christians can have so it's graduated absolutism that is correct. Um, I subscribe to non-graduated absolutism, that there are always absolutes. When absolutes conflict, um, there uh, will be choices that you are given uh, that will seem out of the box. So, for instance, Anne Frank, you know, when they ask her, you know, are there Jews in your house? Um, I, I want to say it was Anne Frank or no, 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 it was. Corey Ten Boom, it was somebody that was hiding Jews. Um, and basically, or Anne Frank was a Jew, wasn't she? Anyway. She was the one I, hiding. Yes, she was in the hiding place. Right, that's the hiding place. Okay, so Corey Ten Boom is the other one. Corey Ten Boom just said to the Nazis, like, yeah, we got Jews all over the house. What are you talking about? And and then they just kind of laughed and left. And so. <laughs> well, that's your so, best case scenario, isn't it? <laughs> Is that right, exactly? Well, <clears throat> yeah. So, so like. Hold on, just, Pastor Mark. Where does sarcasm fit into our loophole? Deception. Did that's where it fits in. It's deception. <laughs> well, well, hey, um, Constantine is here to tell us all the way God lies in the Bible. So, uh, Chris and Veckel, have fun with that. Constantine, what's up? Uh, uh, you're talking about how God lies in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a, I got a bone to pick with you. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, I, I've been away from Clubhouse for a while, but uh, <laughs> it's been so back. nice. Your room is always <laughs> fun. Yeah, so oh, what's sorry, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to. I know Steph is always annoyed with me, so I, I don't want to annoy. Uh, I'll be glad to give you examples if you want. Yes, go ahead. It's been too stale. We haven't had atheists to play with. Guys, okay. be nice. Okay, well, let, let, let me read. I'll just read, read scripture. Okay, so 1 Kings uh, chapter 22, verses 20 yep, through 22. Yep. And, and the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? Mm -hmm. One suggested this and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked. I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouths of all, all of his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. Easy. This is so easy. Oh, my goodness. I can't tell you how many times we've encountered this argument from atheists. Who wants to take it? You take it. Okay. It's real simple. What you're describing there, because obviously you, you probably went to God hates, I mean, uh, people hate God and the Bible dot com. And you picked out this random passage out of first Kings chapter 22. If you read the entire chapter, you'll see that it's simply an act of judgment by God upon the people because they already have bought into the lies that were given to them. So God allowed them to continue to believe those lies by simply not protecting them from the lies. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. You could go fast forward to uh, first, uh, Second Thessalonians where it says God shall send them a strong delusion. Why is he sending them a strong delusion? Because they already believed the lies that they were being told. So now they're out of, of any type. God is not no longer restricting this uh, lying spirit that's already among these people. It's really Yeah, I think the crux of it is the spirit, right, Becca? Like, I'm not familiar with this story. But it doesn't say that God showed up in a burning bush and told a lie. It said that the right. spirit was loosed, right? Like what? What yeah. is? Okay, so you can't really. This isn't an argument for God lying. It's an argument for God not preventing a lie spreading. And those are kind of two different the, things. The story is that a. I think it was King Ahab. He had like four hundred false prophets that surrounded him, and they were all a bunch of yay sayers or yes men, basically. And you, <laughs> yes, sir. Nice. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> and you had the one prophet who actually spoke the truth. Uh, which which prophet was that uh, in this in this book? Was it Micaiah? Micaiah? I always forget the names of some of these prophets. But anyway, every time he spoke the truth in opposition to the other four hundred false prophets that King Ahab surrounded himself with, what did King Ahab say? Oh, I hate this guy. Why? Because every time I ask for advice on what to do here, here we have this guy bringing me a message of condemnation, while my other 400 false prophets here are telling me things that I want to hear for my itching ears. So fast forward to 1 Kings 22, that's when you got this 
situation here where the, the prophet is talking about this council in heaven, about God and the, and the angels, talking about what's going to happen as an act of judgment, an act of judgment towards these people. Why is he judging them? Because they already believe these lies. It's really that simple. So, Constantine, what do you think of that? Well, I mean, I think if you if you believe something and you want to make you know any text fit into what you believe, that that's fine. I mean, nothing will convince <laughs> you otherwise. You know, that's that's just a, that's just a, an example of that. So, if what? by definition, if if you if you begin by definition with the with the statement that God never lies, then any example of God's lie in the Bible will be to you. Well, I, you know, this can be explained because God never lies. You well, already Constantine, have. You, you didn't well, well, bring Con God lying. That's not Constant that didn't yeah. happen in the story you said. That was a that was a very straightforward answer that would not lend to that. So I guess the first way to follow through with this is are you familiar with what Beckham was saying? Have you read the whole chapter? And if so, then it doesn't seem like anyone would have to make something fit. It either seems like, you know, someone reads it a couple verses and says God lies, and and then what you're saying, if someone tries to twist that and make it fit, well that's what they're doing. But Veckel isn't taking that approach. Veckel is saying if you've read the entire chapter, it clearly says these people already believe the lie. So if the chapter says, uh, which I'm asking if you've read the chapter, do you come to the same conclusion? Or if you haven't read the chapter, you know, you want to take five minutes and, and read it real fast and then get back to us and see if um, you're like, okay, well, maybe some people twist things to fit. But in this case, no, it clearly says that these people already believe the lie. Like there's not a whole lot of wiggle room to to make things just twist and fit. Um, Veckel's answer means either yes, they absolutely fit because it just says it, um, or he's a liar, and then you can say Veckel lies. But have you read the whole chapter? Or do you want to brush up on that real fast? Right? Like in the chapter, who is doing the lie? Like who's who's telling the, the, the who's spirit, the You know, God, God is looking right. for an answer. There's a spirit that says, "I will be a lying spirit," and I will do this and that. And, and God says, "Yes, go do it." Yeah, he's trying to say that God lied through proxy by proxy. That's yeah, that's not a that's not an argument you can really make. Like not only what Nathan Veckel are pointing out, but also it, your set your hypothesis that you're bringing to these verses is well, Christians can't be right about this, so God lied. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to read God lied. I read God aloud, right? Like the natural reading of the text is not that. Now, if you had the story of Moses and the burning bush, and Moses is talking to the Lord, and the Lord lied to Moses. You'd have something there, but that you, okay, that's well, not what happened. You know, in you know, all right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, let, let's go to another example since you, you're looking for like a specific God lied. So I second guess, I want to hear you. Uh, second know, Thessalonians. Like, concede that one. I get no, it. I'm not. I'm not conceding. I mean, it's, it's pretty <laughs> obvious to me what's going on, but uh, it's, it's okay. So Second Thessalonians so chapter smart. two. Second Thessalonians chapter two verses eleven and twelve, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this yep. reason, for this I told reason. You. I told for, you. Yeah, for this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And before we answer that, folks, I guarantee he's got two more, and I know exactly. Well, you've already answered it like three times. You yep. specifically mm -hmm. brought up that one. Well, okay, guys, the answer is easy. Like, uh, well, you didn't answer my question, Constantine. Uh, back to the other one. I mean, maybe it's been a long time. You know, like, I mean, I've, I've read, you know, that passage several times. But off the top of my hand, I, head, I don't remember it. So perhaps we should all just read that chapter and then see if the conclusion but is God. Yeah, it's, it's it, the, the conclusion is exactly the same as what we see in first Kings 22. Yeah, no, no. I'm talking about first. I'm talking about the chapter of first Kings because he never answered. So like oh, oh, okay. the, the thing I'm insinuating is it's been long enough. Either he hasn't read it or it's been long enough that he's just saying you're pulling a monkey out of your hat to make it fix uh, to make it fit. And I'm saying you that's not right you can't do that either Veckel is lying through his teeth or the text like Veckel says is clearly going to show these people already believe the lie um anyway and he's on his phone looks like <clears throat> oh so sad right i guarantee you uh when he gets back he's going to quote two more passages one is going to be isaiah 66 3 and 4 and the other one's going to be Ezekiel 14, verses 8 through 9. Guarantee it. But we'll want to preemptively answer them while he's on the phone. So when he gets back, we'll act like we've never heard of it before. Well, well, well let's, 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 <laughs> let's, let's look at Is that deception? Or? Let's look at I want to get you guys' take on actually how you would per personally interpret uh, Ezekiel 14, 
8 and 9. It says, And I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him, and I will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. So <clears throat> right there in plain text, it clearly says, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. But again, context, context, it's the same thing in 1 Kings 22 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Why? This is an act of judgment because these false prophets were already teaching the lies. The people that were listening to them believed the lies. And this is an act of judgment upon those individuals. Well, I mean, if you, the problem is, if you ask any person who ever lied, they will have a rationalization. They'll, they'll tell you context, here's the full story, this is why I lied, I had a good reason to do it, and so it justifies the lie in their mind. So that's, that's the same way that you're justifying so, God lying. So, but wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Anybody can try to justify a lie. The problem is, though, whether or not they've been told the truth <laughs> to begin with. And in every one of these instances where God is passing a judgment upon these individuals, They've been, prior to that, told the truth. It's really that simple. If somebody's telling me one plus one, so Veckel, dude, listen to me. Veckel, one plus one equals two. I'm telling you the truth. And I'm just like, got my fingers in my ear saying, ah, la, 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 la. No, Stephanie told me one plus one equals three. So I'm not, I'm going to believe what she has to say. And then God comes and sends this lying spirit, making me, making it impossible for me to believe otherwise. Sorry, Steph, I, I needed a, I just, I saw you do something on your PRT. So yeah, you're good. But anyway, uh, you know, so I, you know, that's, that's exactly what you're seeing happening in all of these passages. And Somebody for the record, the she truth. said anyone will justify it. I mean, you know, check this out. I have told lies. Lies were bad. I did it selfishly and maliciously. Bad Nate. No excuse. Somebody just saying. Told the truth. Maybe, maybe when you said anyone, you didn't mean anyone, but you know. There's plenty right. of people who are like, yeah, we lied. It was bad. We shouldn't have done that. You've been told the truth many times. God sent them, these people, to hear the truth. They continue to disregard it. And then God says, uh, well, we can call this reprobation if you want. Or maybe we can use a different term. I don't know. But he sends as an act of judgment upon these people who are continuing to embrace these lies, despite the fact that they've been told the truth. It's an act of judgment. That's all. It's God cannot lie. You don't don't miss don't disregard the other passages where God doesn't lie. I think I think what you're saying is lying is good as as long as you have a good reason to do it, and oh. as long as God has a good reason to do it, you know if it's if it's part of some kind of plan, then He is justified in lying. I mean that's that's what you. Const that's what okay, saying. Constantine, this is no that that's wrong. Okay, let me try. Okay. So modern example. Um, this would be Vecchio was trying to say that if um. If I'm, um, <laughs> let's see, if Steph starts saying, Constantine, the argue, your argument you're making is so amazing and wonderful, she's clearly lying to you. Um, but if she says, no, no, keep doing that. The argument you're making is so amazing. You're so right. And then Veckel joins in and he's like, dude, that argument is fire. Like, you should keep saying that. While everyone else is like, wow, they are lying to this guy. They're so bad. But you start believing it. You start listening to their lies. And you're like, hey. These arguments are really, really good. Like, I believe them, yes. And I'm over here screaming at you, they are lying to you, bro. Stop believing their lies. And you're like, no, no, no. I'm believing this because it's amazing. They're telling me the truth. And I'm like, no, you're being lied to. And finally, you go so far down that road that you're like, you're just believing their lies. At some point, if I'm just like, all right, dude, do what you want, whatever. I didn't lie to you. I just, you know, stopped trying to contend and tell you that you're being lied to. I didn't lie to you. Everyone else is lying to you. You just believed it. Yeah, or it's like imagine that you have two friends and one of them is like telling the other something horrible about you and you're telling the other, the third party, like, no, this isn't true. I didn't do this. You've seen, you know, and then imagine that you spent, you know, something like 40 generations prior proving that you didn't do it. But OK, so now this new friend comes along and is like, no, Constantine did this. And you're just like, all right, fine. I don't care. Go believe it. Like that's that's more analogous. If, if you had spent generations upon generations proving that something wasn't true and then this new friend comes along and believes it and then you're like, I'm, I've already told them this a million times. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to allow 
them to just be handed over to this. You know, so, so, lying, so lying is okay as long as you've said the truth. So the you haven't like, established okay. that God lied. <laughs> right? oh, so here, Lord. here's the problem, right, Constantine, is that I see the argument you're making, right? And it would be valid if God had lied. But this is the same thing as like when it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart, right? God, Pharaoh did not have a nice, soft, happy, loving heart towards God. Pharaoh had a hard heart. And then all these events start taking place. And then God says, fine, I'm handing him over to this. You are then trying to make the argument, oh, God took Pharaoh and he was such a good, loving, wonderful person. And God ruined him on purpose. Like, no, God handed him over to what he had already made the choice to do. That's the same thing happening now. You are not establishing that a lie has come from God, from his nature, from his mouth, from his, there, you, you haven't, you're going to have to establish that, buddy. I'm not establishing anything. I'm just reading the biblical text. We know. I mean, it says. Yeah, the Bible we know. Says. You are. You have a preconception. <laughs> we, we, you can't know. see through. And you're rejecting well, historical context. Well, yeah. If you just want to read the biblical text, that's fine. But read all of it. Like, don't just read like you know three verses. And be like, nope. It says it. God's awful. Like, you know, keep reading. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, it, it, it's this knee-jerk reaction that the moment they see something, that they see a, a few set of words. In the same sentence, they just come to this wacky and wild isogenic conclusion, and they're happy with it. It, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Or you know what else I love is when they're like, oh, God says that it's okay to bash babies' heads against the rocks in that yeah. psalm. Yeah. And then you're like, just... okay, let's go look at the psalm. And what it is is the author is writing about what was done to the Jews and what the Jews would like to do back to the people who did to them. God isn't even like in that psalm, right? It's a lament of a people and they're like god permits it prove it you can't that's that's not the context of what's happening at all constantine if we sound a little attacky <laughs> more than no, usual no, it's fine. we have we haven't, it's fine. We, we haven't had an atheist to play with in like two months ever since <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sorry for not entertaining you for a while it's just i kind of got uh, gotten away from clubhouse uh, it, felt, it felt like it was going See? down and uh, not, not much please, please come back so we have atheists to play with <laughs> okay, let, let me so let me bring up another one. This is not this is not like a direct lie, but kind of. Okay, so Mark, Mark four. The other when, ones uh, weren't direct lies either. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, but it, but it's kind of in the same vein. So Mark four, chap, uh, chapter four, verses ten to twelve. This is about right. Jesus uh, talking in parables. So when he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, "The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you." But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may, um, they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. It's the same thing. Go back yeah, to... Yeah, I love this. I use this all the time. I love this one. Yeah, go ahead. Take it, Nate. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not lying. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's just like not even addressing the right subject. Like for the people who are supposed to get it, it, you know, Jesus is telling them, and they're like, oh, wow, we understand. Our hearts are not that hard. Like, we see exactly what you mean. Um, but for the other people, it's like no one's lying to them. He's just like uh, how I just like used a parable to tell you how awful your argument was. But, you know, I did it in a nice, sweet, loving way. Um, I don't know. I mean, you didn't push back, so I don't know if certain people didn't get it. But the ones who are supposed to did. Uh, yeah, I not only the verse. ones who are it's... supposed to, but it's the people who ask. So, like, in this one, this is another great example where it's like the people who live and a spirit of deception or a lie is floating around the community, the false prophets, this. God has also made available the truth through tradition, through, tradition, through his own behavior, through prophets, through generations. Like, the, there's the, what, you're, what you're bringing out, Constantine, are parts where there's a dichotomy. And then you are choosing to fall on the side of, well, because there's a dichotomy, then God is a liar. And therefore, all of Christianity is wrong, right? And you're rejecting the part where Jesus said, I speak in parables. And look at how that's worded. Otherwise, they might be saved. Well, what's the otherwise? They would think about the parable. They would come back to Jesus and say, Rabbi, what does this mean? Because the apostles do that all the time. What are you talking about, Jesus? What does that mean? And then Jesus is all like, oh, okay, let me explain to you right? And we have the benefit of the words and we can read them in hindsight. But this is like, he's, he's setting out these situations so that the dichotomy exists and the people have the choice. Who is not going back to ask Jesus, what did you mean? The people who already don't want Jesus. 
right? So you're you're pointing out kind of the crux of the the Christian paradigm, which is we have the option of following the world, Satan, and lies. We have the option of following God's readily available truth. Which one are you going to pick? And well, and Constantine, I hope you think about that. Well, yeah, otherwise, they'd be saying how evil Jesus was for like not giving them a choice and for like forcing knowledge upon them that, that like violates them, and it's like you know rape of some kind. Like that's how the argument would go if Jesus is like, "Hey guys, here's the answer. Here's the truth." They'd be like, "No, you violated their conscience or their whatever." Like that's exactly what would happen. Yeah, guys. I mean, the problem with this argument is that Jesus states clearly what. So the disciples are asking him, "Why are you speaking in parables? Like parables are kind of confusing. Like why are you doing this?" And Jesus said, "So that they will not turn and be forgiven. You know, so that they no. will not understand. They will not he be says, saved. They don't understand. Otherwise, they might be saved." He didn't say because I don't like those guys. There are plenty of examples where Christ is like excited or I don't know if excited is the right word, but we see interactions where people come to him. He's putting forth all this effort. He's the, the feeding the 5,000, right? And then it numbers how many came to believe. And then in that example, we have like the number that didn't, right? Jesus is doing all of these things to try to help people along to make the right choice in this dichotomy. And then why are you speaking in parables? Well, I'm speaking in parables. They have the option to believe the parable. And they are choosing not to. He's not saying otherwise they might be saved as in he doesn't want them saved. He's saying otherwise they might be saved if they believed the parable they would be saved. Right. I mean, he's saying if I spoke cl clearly they might be saved, but because I'm speaking in parables they don't understand, so they will not be saved. So apparently that's the goal. But wait, how, how no. is that not, though? Because um, he didn't lie to them. I mean, I mean the, the topic is about whether or not God can lie. And you brought this passage up. If he's not explaining to them the parable, first of all, nobody understood the parable, not even the disciples. So he pulled them aside and then explained it to them. OK, that's not lying to the others. After he, they asked, he just he just put out a, a parable that no one understood. And then later on, he pulled only his followers aside and explained the parable. That's not lying. That's not lying. Right. Well, and I imagine not, that the people who wanted more information would have been able to get it. I mean, Constantine, I'm assuming that you pride yourself on some very lofty level of education that you have. Have you ever had a professor ask you to write an essay? Ever? Sure, plenty of times. Yes. Okay. So why why didn't the professor just tell you the answer to the essay? Was he lying to you? When he asked you to research on your own and to come up with a good argument and to and to arrive at the conclusions? He was lying, oh. right? The the essay I don't think the essay ever has a right answer. The whole point of the essay is for you to think and come come to your own nice conclusion. Dodge. I mean, the yeah, professors don't too. want you to it write an essay dodge. with a specific so answer. So it's not the topic of the essay that's important, Constantine. It's why would a teacher give you a problem for you to solve? Why wouldn't the teacher just hand you the answer sheet, Constantine? Okay, so let's let's assume this essay. No, 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 you know, no, my, no, my, my no, 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 no. I want an answer to that question. I want yeah, you. Yes. To, why doesn't a teacher hand you an answer sheet? Well, let, let's say the professor knows that my, uh, no, the, my, my answer I to the want essay. An wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so let, let's say the professor knows that my answer to the essay. I don't want to know what you think the professor would say. Uh, there's the simple will, will answer result to this. in my, me dying or being my tortured. Eight -year -old, like, no, 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 well, no, 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 you know, no, no, write no, an Constantine. essay. Constantine, my eight year old daughter could tell me very quickly why her teacher doesn't hand her the answer sheet. I want you to tell me why the teacher doesn't hand you the answer sheet. Because I can, I see what you say. Well, life and death isn't involved. Well, that it might be. You're trying to get a degree so that you can earn money and feed your family and not end up homeless under a bridge, okay? So you, if you want to be that asinine, we can do that. But the question is, why doesn't, to why doesn't the teacher give you the answer sheet? Why doesn't the teacher write the essay for you? I mean, obviously he wants me to think for, think for Aha, myself. Ah, yeah. there you go. So you can naturally learn by your own effort what the truth is. Once you have arrived at the truth and you fully comprehend it because you've put effort in, now you have a legitimate and authentic understanding on what it is you were supposed to learn. Did your teacher lie to you when he walked you through that process? 
Okay, Steph. So let's assume my no! professor knows that tomorrow, yes, if I don't you. give the right answer to this essay, I'm going to be killed. And she's like, "Well, he needs to think for himself. You know, just write a, an essay. You'll come up to the right uh, with the right answer, and well, you'll survive." Well, if you don't you know? get the right answer to the essay, ideally, the teacher would pull you aside and teach you. Okay, here's where you went wrong. Here's the grammatical corrections. Here's another resource for you to follow. And then you get the degree and you feed your family. Where if you just go, "Poo poo, teacher. I don't like you. I think you're so mean." because I wish you just gave me the answer sheet. What a mean professor. And then you go out and don't get a job and you're like, darn it, that professor never gave me the answer sheet and I didn't get my degree. Like that's the equivalent of what you're doing to God. It's like asinine. So, okay, so let's say you're like walking down the street and uh, you see like a, a gunfight or something. And then you you walk past the gunfight and you see a person and instead of, t instead of t telling them, you know, don't go there, you might get shot. You tell them, well, here's a story about some guy and uh, you think for yourself and decide if you want to go. And I'm such a moral person and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm letting so you think a gun to the head of the Jews listening to a parable, Constantine. Your analogies always fall apart because you have this bent on proving your assumption, which is that this has to be incorrect. Because if this is correct, Constantine might be wrong, right? So you are bent. Who, like, let, let's look at your silly hypothetical. Who was holding a gun to the head of the listeners of the parable? God, eternal torture. Okay, he was right at that moment saying, here's a ball of fire, here's a cloud, I'm going to smother you if you don't listen to Jesus. And they were like, Pfft. that's that's your interpretation of what was happening at that moment? Well, pretty pretty much. I mean, Jesus says, you know, okay. they, uh, right. they well, spoken in parables so that they don't understand and they will not be forgiven. I mean, that's that's pretty clear. This, I mean, this is willful to to ignorance. Like, Constantine, honestly, sure. like, I'm starting to agree with Nate that at some point it's like, how come when you hear a decent argument, like you understand how teachers teach and you understand what natural and authentic learning looks like. And you're like, that's not what Jesus was doing. He had a ball of fire to their head. I just know it. It's like, that is just willful. I, I don't even know what to say to that. If you were my kid, I'd put you in timeout and just be done with the conversation. Lock him in but... the sin closet. Well, let's <laughs> talk to Honestly. Michael. Michael, how are you, Michael? How's your Monday, Michael? Oh, uh, we're plugging away so far. I decided not to work today, so everything's good. Huh? Yeah, nice. Well, I should say, I decided Michael, to work. do you I took, work for the Canadian I, I took a, government? I took, I took a vacation day. Uh, no, I don't work for the Canadian government. I work for an agency oh. that closely liaises with the Canadian government. Okay, gotcha. I, I, I know there are 13,000 people who were put to death under euthanasia in uh, Canada in 2022. That's like apparently 4% of all Canadian murders. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I'm unfamiliar under with the like, story. They did what? Do you want to explain it more? Is like what the the right to die law or whatever? Like that you can you can ask to, you can request to be suicided or assisted in death or whatever. But now that it extends to like homeless people and drug users and stuff like that, people with not like inexplicable pain. Did you say you yeah, were familiar, Michael? No, I'm I'm completely unfamiliar with that. Oh, okay. Well, well, you know the you, you know the the law or whatever, right? Where you can like request for the government to assist you in death. Yeah, uh, the and uh, I've I've actually seen the the checklist uh, involved in that, uh, and spoken to uh, professionals that have taken part in this type of thing, uh, and to call it rigorous is the most gross understatement you could possibly uh, put forward. Well, that's horrific. I didn't realize you could do that in Canada. Oh, uh, serendipity! I turned hand raising off because Bob was being annoying earlier. Well, do you think that people? But have I, the I right invited to, you. Yeah. Do you think people have the right to live? The right to life? Yes. Yeah. So do you think? So do you, so then? Do you also think it's that people don't have the right to not live? Yeah. So people have the right to do what they want. It's where you're involving third parties that it becomes very creepy. Like if if someone really wants to die and they're going to go home and take pills and die or whatever, it, it it's the government as an institution standing by and saying, okay, we'll help with this. That's where the element of scary is. Well, and it's also like, um, you know, how people will, you know, it's like if you have pancreatic cancer and you have like three months to live and you're like in constant pain every waking moment, I mean, that still sucks. But I mean, you know, that that's probably one of the most generous examples versus how, you know, think nefarious here with me for a minute. People are like, okay, we have too many homeless people. We have too many dreams on the system. This is costing us lots of money. You know, Papa could use a bigger budget. Hey, are you addicted to painkillers? Oh, that's not good. What kind of life is that? Hey, we have an answer. Have you considered this? Um, you know, which you would say that will never happen. 
But like the bar, apparently, from some report I, I was listening to over the weekend, has already been lowered from like you know people in excruciating pain to now being either either outright offered or at least um kind of kind of pushed towards like habitual drug users and like homeless people. How about for, for like that, that's pretty rough, right? That's that's that's. I would like up. to see. Yeah, I'd like to see that oh, that right. citation. And, and, and Michael, I will say, you know, to to be fair, because I, I I didn't check into this, I just heard it in passing. But to be fair, even if that's not like an official government policy, and the government's like, no, 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 only for like you know the first kind, the worst kind. I mean, you would have to say just like is the human nature that you wouldn't put it past like one person to operate outside the parameters of the government requirements to do that, right? Because people suck and are awful. So I'm sure there's one example somewhere out there of them doing this. I think it's fair to note, too, that <clears throat> the article that I read on that said that they were also including, including people with um, uh, mental illness. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I feel like uh, when you're dealing with somebody... Because they can't consent, that, right? Yeah, when you're dealing with somebody who's struggling with mental illness, and and while I agree, Michael, I think that, that they're trying to have a really um, rigorous process in place because like, it's not like you can go to the doctor today and say, okay, this is my deal. This is my circumstance and, and have it done tomorrow. I think once you're approved, you still have to then wait an additional 90 days before they will do the assisted uh, uh, <clears throat> injection. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I just don't oh. Know that I feel that people with mental illness are competent to be making those kinds of decisions. I, I remember the source. And I think Gavin wanted to say something, but we'll get Gavin in. But Michael, um, are you familiar with a guy named Viva Fry? No, it doesn't, doesn't uh, ring a bell. Apparently he was like a Quebec. Did I say that right? Not Quebec, it's Quebec. Did I say that right? Anyways, apparently he was like an attorney um, in Quebec. Quebec? Quebec? That place. Yeah, I mean, even, even I say... Yeah, even I say Quebec. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, it's so just he, pronunciation. So he was an attorney in Quebec. Uh, anyway, but I guess he was recently, re or I don't know how long ago, relocated to Florida because I guess the government, like the whole COVID thing, like they were they were messing with something he was doing. So he's just like, all right, and he left Canada. But anyways, that's that's where I heard the report from. But apparently he was like a practicing attorney for like over a decade in Canada, and was was ranting about this um, stuff going on. It's like Viva F R E I or F R I E. I think it's F R E I. Viva Fry. Hang on, I'm just scribbling a note down because I'll I'll have to look this up. It it, uh, it yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I think it was serendipity. I think it was you who was talking. So it, like as soon as you kind of um, swerve into the aisle of um, mental health, that's kind of that's kind of my wheelhouse. Um, it, yeah, it, it doesn't. Yes, I I thoroughly agree with you. Um, I don't know of it ever having happened. I can't off the top of my head think of, but think that I know anyone who knows it's happened or knows anyone that knows anyone that knows anyone where that's happened. Because one of the things that has to be paramount is the capacity for consent. Correct. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I, I simply, I, you know, like this whole thing, I'm going to have to look this, this person up. I, I don't, uh, I don't buy it. Color me, Color me. This uh, is, I, th yeah. I think it's. I think it's crap. Uh, this oh, is actually. This is a new addition to the law, is my understanding. And I don't even know. If, like, I feel like when I initially read this article a couple of weeks ago when it came out, I'm not even certain that it has completely like passed or or whatever the process is in Canada. It, it's something that's been proposed to include drug addicted people and people suffering. With irremedial mental illness, but apparently, no matter how you sprite. Oh, and Monica knows. <laughs> Monica, are you? Uh, are you? I guess you're familiar with the guy. How? Where do you know him from? Uh, but yeah, and, and he, I guess regardless, like the bigger point is, you know, whether or not you know it's all thirteen was it thirteen thousand humanitarian things because all these people were in excruciating pain. Like apparently, you know, how, however you do it, the numbers say like you know four percent of all death in Canada was from assisted suicide via the government i mean you know if it was thirteen thousand people in excruciating pain who had no quality of life i mean i guess it still sucks but you know that was that was the main i'm point. not i'm not certain that that statistic is correct either because i feel like i read that they've had around 
um, 10,000 since the law was instituted back in 2015 or 2016. And um, uh, it, was, it was before that. It was 20, like 2014 in Quebec. Um, was it? Wait, didn't you yeah. say the statistic was last year in 2022, it was 4% of homicides. If you include those number, the those people who took the assisted suicide option as a homicide, it was 4% of that for I'm, one year. Yeah, I know the whole point in the article was they said that it had increased by like 10% in since COVID. The, the number of deaths that uh, that were assisted increased like 10% since COVID was what Nate, I had Nate, read. how do you spell the guy's name again? I'll apologize. Uh, let's see. Uh, Monica, uh, F-R-E-I. Viva, V-I-V-A, like Viva Las Vegas. Viva, yeah. F-R-E-I. Yeah, she says, uh, oh, she put the... Uh, I guess that's probably one of the videos. If you can, I know you don't do the side chat, but yeah, I never look at side chat. That may be the video that we're talking about, or at least one of them. So the only thing that comes up is some guy's YouTube channel. That's probably it. That's probably right. He's like got glasses and kind of long curly hair. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to. I'll have to look into that. I get. Uh, I get. Uh, man, my my spidey sense starts tingling when somebody talks about a lawyer they heard talking about I, something on his YouTube channel. I, well, uh, well, he's. I guess he's not a practicing lawyer anymore since he fled Canada. So now he does do YouTube. But I, I would be interested if you could click on that video if it's the right one where he's talking about the Canada death numbers and all that. I, I would like your informed commentary um, after after seeing what he has to say. Yeah, I'll, yeah, definitely gonna. I, I bookmarked the uh, I bookmarked the page, so I'll have a look at it. And hope, hopefully, it's the right one. Like I, I don't like. I, I guess it's is it a Rumble link? Like I don't really watch Rumble. But so uh, maybe it's I, the same yeah. one. No, this one comes up as, as just YouTube. Um, yeah. I think I have I think I have silly things like Rumble blocked. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. So this guy was uh, this is born May twenty third, nineteen seventy nine. Canadian lawyer, formerly. Oh, Steph, can you invite Connie? I invited her up like a long time ago. She's still not up her. Yeah. So he was a he was the former member of the he was a political candidate for the People's Party of Canada, which. Um, is like um, it, it's it's pretty far, pretty far like well not even pretty far. It's about as right leaning as you can go. Still left of people like Trump, um, but uh, pretty far, pretty far right leaning party. Is it as far right as you are left, or not to the same degree? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I'd have to think about it. Close, close close how far left do you consider yourself uh damn near fall off the planet <laughs> <clears throat> okay oh so you're a communist okay okay so so that what that demonstrates is a gross misunderstanding of uh, the differences between socialism and communism there's and and it's just like as soon as when you say something like that what it really shows me and and i like you but you don't know what you're talking about because the differences between socialism and communism are, are, are gigantic and you don't seem to understand the difference. I just want to start by saying yeah, I, I, like, I like both of you. So, okay, with that in mind, could it carry on? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's completely, so the, the best way to, the best way to put it would be, you know, so, you know, like former leaders of the uh, the former Soviet Union, like Stalin, etc., were communist. Um, you have um, a pretty mainline socialist still as a member of the Senate in the U.S. named Bernie Sanders. He identifies as a, as a, a democratic socialist, which is the yeah, same way know. I which is the same way I identify as well, right? A democratic socialist, right? And and the the funny thing is is that there are Again, there are galaxies of difference between the two. And what's really funny is, <clears throat> and I, I talk to people about this kind of stuff a fair bit. Um, so like the evils of public libraries or public schools or garbage pickup or road maintenance uh, or police services. Those are all socialized programs, friend. They're all socialized programs. But nobody ever talks about the evils of public libraries. There's just a galaxy of difference between the two things you're talking about. There just is. 
I'll get down off my. I made I made the joke that you say you're so far left that you can fall off the planet. Uh, that's that's how I associate with people who are uh, in the left, uh, the 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 far far left. Um, they they hold to and uh, adhere to policies that I think are naturally uh, inherently detrimental to other people regarding freedoms, personal freedoms and stuff. I mean, we see a lot of people who are against uh, capitalism, they're against the idea of, of, of people, uh, you know, hard work and making money and, and uh, hiring who they want and all these other kind of things. And they want to depend on big government to, to, to force feed its, uh, its own uh, belief. Call. Come on. You... Hello, straw man calling. Did I say well, any, did I say I I'm against any of those things? What's, what happened? Did I say that I'm against any of those things? No, I didn't say that. You, you I, never I, even I, asked I, me about capitalism. I am I against. I am. I, I am against totally no, no, no. unfettered I, I, capitalism. I, I, I was under the assumption that that's what you believe. Uh, Why would you no, make an assumption like that? Notice, I said assumption. So far left, assumption. falling off the planet. That's where that came from. Yeah, you <laughs> said falling off the planet. So right. I, that led me to the assumption. I'm not. Say, I'm not making an, a positive claim. I said it was an assumption. Okay. Uh, that's what do you understand? Do you understand now that it was an incorrect, uh, incorrect assumption? No, I know. I know that there. Um, you know, not every uh, so, yeah, people in your camp is. Uh, is it's not monolithic. I know that. I know there's different right. levels. So it was an un, so it was an so it was an unfair assumption. Well, of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was. It was sort of a joke, actually. Uh, okay. I, I no. Or incorrect it. assumption. Yeah. Yeah. Part. Yeah. You know, part That's of, cool. Part yeah. Of, yeah. So, so, so for the record, I'm not against capitalism. I don't think unfettered capitalism is a good thing. Um, I, but you know, but I, I'm in favor of people working hard and making money. And people should people should be able to run their businesses with as responsibilities, of course. With responsibilities, of course. Like you, like you can't just like when you say as they as they want. I think yes to an extent. But like for example, if you, let's say you you manufacture a product and a byproduct of manufacturing whatever product it is, is some type of harmful chemical. Well, I want to run my business by just taking it over and dumping it in the sewer. Well, I don't think you should be able to do that. Well, but I do, yeah. right. But, but, but when you say as you want, right, that's, that's unbridled, right? So I think you should be able to run your company as you see fit, given parameters. Yeah, yeah, given parameters, yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah, I, think like we fundamentally, I think we fundamentally agree with those things. Okay, okay. What about freedom of speech? How's your, how's your what's your thoughts? I'm not a, I'm not a free speech absolutist. So so uh, can a person say what they want to say in, uh, for example, on TV, like in the news? Uh, know, depends. It depends I, what it is that they're saying. So for example, there there are hate speech laws in Canada. So it is a punishable offense. You can you can be charged with a crime in Canada if you deny the Holocaust. That is a crime in Canada. Yeah, that's terrible. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. See, see, that's what I'm talking because, about. Because you're denying history of fact. That's terrible. That's terrible. That, that, yeah, well, that's not going to have any different. bearing in what, how much money, how much a, a roll of toilet paper co uh, you know, costs at a store. Or it's not going to bring any type of uh, financial uh, you know, or social in, uh, detriment to anybody else. It's just an opinion that somebody has. It might be incorrect. Are uh, there other, how many different forms of harm are there? Is there more than financial harm? Can you cause psychological harm to people? Well, it's yeah. caused to me every day in this room. Yes, I know. <laughs> Veckel, right. Veckel, Veckel, can, but, but can there be, who, wait, if they just can there be other, the, it's a very simple question. Can you, can you cause on, harm in other, other the, ways to people? Like, if you ask me, wait, so you mean, well, let, me, let me just make sure I'm understanding. You. So sure. I'm standing on, the, I'm standing at the bus stop. Yep. Right. And some guy said, hey, somebody comes up to me, asks me, do I believe in the Holocaust? And I say, no, absolutely not. What will happen? That's not me? the same. That's not the same thing. Oh, okay, great. All right, That's well, not the same if I, thing. But if I open up a YouTube channel and I say the Holocaust did not happen in Canada, what happened? Um, I think. Well, I think if it was on YouTube. I think first of all, someone would have to flag it or report it. What I'm talking about is someone like, in the pub, like. Okay, so what I'm talking about is something. Someone in the public square. So, for example, uh, in Toronto, there's a place called Young Young Dundas Square. It's kind of like a like a miniature version of Times Square in New York. Um, if you were to go there and I go there lots of times cause there are people with, it's almost like, um, people use it like a speaker's corner in London where they go there and just start talking about stuff. Um, if you were to go there and you were to stand on a milk crate or whatever and start talking about how the Holocaust didn't happen, you could be 
you could be charged by the police if they became like it's it's not like there's a it's not like there's a beacon that says you know that goes off right burp, burp, burp. you know we live in a socialist country therefore everybody has a microchip implanted in them and every time someone talks about something the government doesn't like what to talk about the police are sent to your door that's not what happens oh, that's what next. I'm talking about yes exactly yeah, no it's not but what I'm saying is is that is that if you were in that public square and said something and then somebody said hey uh, hey nine one nine one one or whatever this person is you know is denying the Holocaust this that and the other thing. There is a there are there is a set of parameters in which you could be charged by the police and and so on and so forth. I'm yes, not talking that's about how it, that's how so it's the not. reason that that's horrific, right? That's is a because, slippery slope fallacy. Uh, no, no, the reason that's <laughs> horrific is because and and I got to run in just a second, so this is my goodbye. Uh, I'll be back uh, in a bit, but the reason that that's horrific is not because people should run around and say the Holocaust didn't happen. Everyone here who's a sane and logical person is like, yeah, I'd love to punch somebody who holds to that opinion, right? The reason that's horrific and the reason we don't allow that in America is because we were built on the idea that horrible things happen, power changes hands. If you don't put in all sorts of measures for protection like checks and balances, right? So the question becomes like, who is saying what falls into the category of, of the same thing as Holocaust denial. Is it now an arrestable offense to say that you don't think your children should be vaccinated? Well, medical science is against that. And, you know, there's plenty of evidence to prove. So we can pretty, uh, you know, we can pretty um, reliably say that oh, I'm parallel parking while I do this. I want a gold star. We can pretty reliably say that that's false information. So if we open the door for anything that can be proved to be false by one way or another to be a jailable offense, we are now violating the very system that makes it so that tyranny can't happen. Do you see the problem? The problem is not that we think people should be Holocaust deniers. We think they have the right, they should have the right for people to be idiotic is worth the price of guaranteeing that tyranny is not possible. So, and these, this is one of the, and I think this is just where we're just going to have a disconnect, whereas there are many portions of what you just said, Steph, that I agree. And I think you should be able to get a gold star for parallel parking while having such an intense discussion um, where, where we, where we just have a disagree. Like, it's almost like it falls almost in the same vein as second amendment. And I don't, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but like, I, it, like, I get it. It's in your DNA. It's not in mine, and we're not going to bridge that gap. Yeah, it's kind of like coarse tuning versus fine tuning. It's like you know, America, even though it's changing, and there are a lot of people that disagree. But like between the two, it's like you know, I, I kind of like coarse tuning, like you know, very, very like less rules and more like buck up, buttercup, deal with things yourself, versus more fine tuning, like more rules, more red tape, more like government kind of like helicopter mom. And I just don't like that. And I get how some people, you know, it makes them feel secure or makes them, I, I don't know. It makes them okay with it. And for me, it like care. repels me from it. So and it's funny, I, like, I, I don't know that it makes me feel secure, but it doesn't make me fearful. Like it seems to with some, and I'm, th that may come off harsher than I mean it to, but it doesn't make me fearful. Either. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. I wouldn't say fearful as much as just like, you know, reading the tea leaves, like look at history when this happens. Like, um, you know, we have plenty of examples more going bad than going good. Um, so so for me, it's just like, look, I, I just want, like, the government to do as little as possible to make this country run. Like, for you know, protect us from, like, foreign threats, protect us from, like, rabid bands of, like, roaming murders on the streets. Like, you know, just just the big stuff. Um, See, you that's know, schools, interesting. Schools, roads, that's fine. That's great. But when it comes down, like, as you start going down that list, like, I'm going to start saying no real quick. Like, let's do this more Wild West than not. <laughs> okay. Okay, so 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 no, so you don't ever want government involved in, in telling people who can marry who. You don't ever want that happening, do you? That's that's uh, too much government involvement, isn't it? Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's because... The I, government telling two people who can get married, that's crazy. That should never happen, should it? Well, what I'm trying to... So, yeah, all, almost, yeah. Like, I would want maybe a little almost? bit of time to... No, hang, hang on. I, w I would maybe want a little bit of time to flesh that whole thought out and the ramifications. But if we're going to go point by point, yeah, I think marriage is something like, you know, the ramifications would be like, is there somehow, is it going to break the country for like taxes and systems and benefits of married people? Like have knowing I no not, nothing religiously, which is where you're maybe going is coming into my thought. 
I'm trying to like super process, like, would this break somehow our system of finances and benefits for married people? Um, anyways, so barring that, like if no, everything can function just fine. No, I don't think government should have anything to do with marriage whatsoever. It shouldn't even be a thing. Like if, if okay. someone wants to get married because of their, their tradition, their religion, great, get married. There's not going to be a government box for you to check married. You're just going to be a married couple in the mind of your church, your family, your religion, whatever. But yeah. anyways. Or, or, or your mind of your non-church, not religion. Sure, whatever. So, you know, and, and, and like you'll never see the you'll never see the White House lit up with a giant projected Christian flag on it, nor would you ever see it lit up with what actually happened, the rainbow, you know, LGBTPS flag. Um, you would just see none of that. It would just be a White House with maybe some lights on it. OK, so that's really interesting. That's really interesting. So do you also think then that there sh- so there should be no. Because, like, and again, I'm not a, a constitutional expert, like, at all. I know pretty much jack about it. But I'm pretty sure there's a part in it where it says, you know, government should, you know, that there should be no infringement on religion and government. Like, there should always be a separation between those two. Yes. Congress right. shall make per- no law. Those Perfect. Are the first words of the. Perfect. Yeah. So first should, words of the, first yeah. of the Bill of Rights. So, should there be uh, prayers before things like Congress? Should that happen? Because that seems like religious involvement in government. Uh, great, 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 great point. I, I mean, th- by the way, the stuff, the like few examples you're throwing out, this is so far down the road from where I would like stop government. But, you know, butterfly effect, right? If you say like, you know, sure, no prayers because it's a secular country, whatever. But also the times that you would even have to do those prayers would be like once every four years because there's so less red tape that there's barely a, a Congress has any job at all. So it'd be like, oh, you mean I'm going to get like one less prayer every four years because Congress basically just is like, are the lights turned on? Is anyone attacking? No? Okay. We're also taking like, you know, 2% of people's money or a a free volunteer uh, donation because people understand they want to freely give to this pool called the government. And we don't have to have the IRS. We don't have to have all these other three-letter agencies. Sure. Everything's good. Here's the thing. Even if you go to IRS.gov, you'll find that we live under a voluntary tax system. Yeah, don't tell them that, though. Yeah, try that. (laughs) Second of all, second of all, I find nowhere in the Constitution that you have freedom from religion. You only have freedom of religion. You can't have one without the other. Uh, Connie, you've been up here a little while. <laughs> What's up? And I'm going to have to run soon, too. Oh, my! I have two new kittens. One of them almost ordered a pattern on eBay yesterday, and today they raised my hand to get up on stage. <laughs> so, so I put the phone down there. Fascinated. They're fascinated with it. Um, but um, uh, I actually am a communalism. You guys know that I was in a lot of communes. Christian communes, by the way, was the spearhead of the Jesus movement, which I understand from this platform was the fourth largest move of God in this United States. So um, I'm not against uh, what Michael's saying, per se. Um, I also have really strong feelings about mixing um, political uh, stuff with uh, conversations about Jesus because it's as far as east is from the west and I would just add that Jesus actually lived in a time when there was no freedom of speech and um, was crucified for it and so were his followers living under a regime the Roman Empire where there was no freedom of speech so uh, it's not like it's not uh, something that wasn't very evident to them and their mentioning of these things, Michael, just for you and me, uh, is very limited. I think there's about four things in the New Testament regarding government and believers. So um, I, too, have recognized that um, just because uh, the government makes a law out of something like I have to have uh, automobile insurance is is a form of socialism. 
I understand that some of these things were actually started by farmers so that they wouldn't all suffer the same. Uh, we have homeowners insurance. It's a it's a form of socialism. Just because they made it a law doesn't mean it's not socialism. It is. Um, uh, I I believe that Jesus uh, lived uh, kind of rough and uh, uh, for the last three years of his life anyway, and um, uh, slept and ate as a, a, a community of people, of believers that followed him around. So I think that when we try to bash one another over these kinds of things, we really take our eye off the important things that we should be focusing on. Uh, you know how I feel about this, Nate. But um, I, I'm only putting my two cents worth in because my cat lifted, touched its paw on that little hand down at the, at the corner. But um, Michael, I think that people would say that I'm kind of far left I believe that uh, the world is on its own track. It's going in a direction. And I don't believe that born-again Christians live in the same government. We live in a government called the kingdom of God. And in that, in that paradigm, in that, it's, I believe it's an actual physical space. I think Einstein would have understood it perfectly. There is another place to live as believers that doesn't have anything to do with this world except for reaching out to lost people and pulling them into the kingdom of God, which is a completely different place to live. And with that, I'll hang my hat. Well, it sounds like if Kitty keeps getting in trouble, maybe Cashew Kitty needs to be on the menu. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure yeah. they're good little animals. Hey, there! They were this gal set, uh, was selling them for nine hundred dollars a piece. Oh my! Me, I know. <laughs> she gave me the last two. One of them is white, and he's called a Scottish Fold. So he oh doesn't yeah, have, he doesn't have any ears to speak of. And, <laughs> I mean, he looks like a little white monkey, and um, and the the little girl is a um called a snowshoe. Both of them very valuable. Uh, I hardly know what to do with them. I'm 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 like a mom with a couple of babies. They're they're really valuable creatures. That I'm really lost. Yeah, my cats are about a year and a half right now, and they're both just staring at me right now, just like yeah. If you died right now, I would eat you. That's that's how I'm interpreting. They're looking at me. Uh, <laughs> well, Michael. Um, Let's see, every time you keep coming in with that PTR, it's going to make me keep thinking of D&D. How do you deal with, or do you have like responsible people who actually want to play games um, show up every time? Or are you constantly having uh, enough people like cancel that the game has to be postponed? Or like the person running it's like, oh, I, I have an emergency that came up. Like, or do you have a pretty stable group? Because lately mine is uh, annoying me. Like they keep having like, total random emergencies and they're like oh can't make the game tonight guys sorry next week oh next week i'm like uh well i mean life gets in the way but i mean i play with a group of people that i've played with for more than 35 years oh my um so i mean we're i mean yeah so life happens sometimes and you know we all have you know like if you know for example you know everybody you know it's like we talk about things okay when so and so is going on vacation or when, you know, over, you know, holidays or stuff like that, you know, things aren't going to happen. But beyond that, I mean, pretty much. I, so, okay, we get together every other Saturday evening. Uh, that's, that's pretty much the schedule. In the past year, so 26-ish, well, by the time you figure in holidays and stuff like that, 20, 20 get-togethers. Oh, okay. Of the past of the past twenty get-togethers, um, we've canceled two, <laughs> or re or rescheduled two. So I mean, it's a it's a solid group, and it has been for a long time. Do you play on roll twenty, or is that a different group you play on roll twenty? Uh, so so when we can't get together in person, we do roll twenty, uh, and when we can get together in person, then yeah, then one of us will host. Um, a lot of times it's me because I've got a, a good space with a good sized table. Um, or it's uh, my friend Dan, uh, who's kind of the, the, he's the most central overall, but he has a little less space. Uh, so yeah. So, okay. So of those, 
uh, of the times we get together in person, if we get together in person, everybody shows up. Uh, it's just a, a thing. But yeah, I mean, it's just, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's sad to hear of your um, issues with the, the get togethers. We, we have, I mean, it, like I said, we've, we've lived, like we've lived so much of our lives together, quote unquote, together in this group uh, that it's just kind of a, a thing. We just get together. It's like, yeah, we're getting, you know, it's like a couple of weeks. We don't even need to put it in our calendars anymore. It's just like, yep, yeah, next time. And it just is, right? So, yeah, when this yeah. starts happening, I, I start like uh, getting getting antsy. So I'll like go join like a bunch of groups, <laughs> and then I'll get myself in like three or four, and then I'm like, oh, what have I done? I don't have this much time. Um, so, anyways, I mean, it's been a good group. Like I've been in it for probably like two years or more. Um, it's just every now and then like stuff happens, and players are like, I have to leave, and then like we have to like search for new people, and you know, it's hit or miss. Like you know, I think the last time. Um, we talked about this. We found one random person that was having uh, affectionate feelings for their dog. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff we have to sort through. Uh, one more question. <laughs> have, have you heard of the, the do you, oh, two more questions. Do you do much fictional reading? Don't say the Bible. No. Don't say the Bible. Don't say the Bible. No, I, I don't, I don't read, uh, I don't read any uh, fiction. I only read, uh, I only read nonfiction. And, I, oh, okay. and by, by the same token, like when it comes to movie watching, I don't, I don't enjoy, I don't really enjoy documentaries or things like that. I, I like to, I like to visualize my fiction and read my fact. Okay. My, qu- my question, and I guess for anyone that I'm going to have to run was going to be, is anyone familiar with the genre called, I think, I think it's called lit RPG, like literary role-playing games. Apparently, it's it's a genre for people that want to take uh, like tabletop experiences, like tabletop RPGs, um, and put them into a story. So I, I just learned about it like last night. Oh, random guy, maybe he knows. So I just learned about it last night, and it I mean it almost seems kind of like fan fiction, but I guess for for lit fiction, like it really really tries to to force um, like RPGs in there. So I I don't know. Random, do you have insight on this? Maybe you can tell me. I'm trying to understand. Yeah, a little. Yeah, a little bit. Um, uh, something that you can go find if you're interested is a is a little book game called Fiasco, um, and that actually is kind of a delve into this in, into the genre that you're you're referring to. Um, and it's basically it has technically it has dice, but not really. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I, I would encourage you to just check it out. It, it's probably cost something like thirty bucks or something like that. Maybe maybe less than that. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a game called Fiasco. You basically sit down with some people and, uh, the, the significant part is you kind of, uh, establish what the background, what the overarching story may be, um, as a crew. Um, and then, uh, you kind of do little scenes, uh, that include two people, uh, role-playing as kind of individuals or, or multiple individuals in the environment. Uh, and with one person kind of claiming a, a particular perspective or a particular character, um, and then you just kind of like slowly tell the story itself um, without any like specific dice rolls to see what happens and, and, and stuff like that. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I was looking for new uh, new reading material last night and um, through a link of a link of a link of a link um, of Amazon reviews, like some person mentioned this lit RPG uh, genre. So I, I found some things that look kind of interesting to read. Um, so I, I add them to my list. But my uh, my current list is quite long, so it'll probably take me a little while to get to them. But well, I appreciate that. And uh, then thanks everyone for yeah, thanks everyone for the discussion. Uh, I guess we will see you all maybe tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Hey, Good cheers. luck with the uh, cats, Connie. <laughs> take care, Michael. Random. Oh, and hey, Gavin. <laughs>